Good evening everybody and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It's Wednesday night and we are live. I haven't unmuted you yet, Lou. There you go. <laughs> I'm doing that on purpose this time. I'm doing that on purpose so I can actually get a sentence in without you going bah! over my face. <laughs> anyway, welcome everybody. Uh, it's Wednesday night and as I said we are talking about LAN parties today. Uh, LAN parties, local gaming, kind of social gaming essentially. It's a little bit of a follow on from the communities episode we did last week. Um, as you can see we have uh, above me I believe we've got Thorno and he's our special guest today. He uh, runs a LAN party himself. Uh, all of us uh, in this. Uh, in fact I'm not sure Steve's been to LAN Ops. Have I you? don't think I have. No. Um, Everyone else in our in our crew has been to Lanops, uh, and Lanops is 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 Thornhill's land. But I'll let him introduce himself if he's uh, if he's willing to do it. So, go ahead, tell us who you are and what you do. All right, uh, well, just got Lanops. Just do Lanops uh, every shit. How long do how much do we run it now? We run. I run Lanops every about four four times a year. Run it for about ten years now. Mm -hmm. uh, been gaming all my life um started on well, Atari ST uh Atari ST. Play, uh, yeah earliest, uh, earliest memories uh Atari ST bloody paper boy the uh, paper boy um showing your age now. And, You're showing yeah. your age that you're younger than us oh, I'm 23 <laughs> I'm only, I, I, you know um what else then I got into PC stuff with Quake and Half-Life um when they first came out, so I was like seven, six, seven years old. Uh, scared the shit out of me. Um, then got into online gaming. Then about thirteen, got into LAN gaming. And then gotta, gotta say, Chris, for for a young lad, he knows a lot about games and he's played a lot of games that we consider. Oh yeah, yeah. It wasn't so, a criticism. I'm just no, saying you're showing. Uh, starting with the Atari ST, yeah. you know that that came out while I was already like playing games. I mean, well, I'm you already not, had a beard. Yeah, I already <laughs> grew, I'd already grown at least half of this beard. Yeah, um, I, I, I started on Commodore 64s, Atari 2600s, that kind of thing, and yeah. I'm not well, I'm, I'm not I'm that much older. Into, uh, I'm big into retro gaming as well, so um, started collecting quite a lot as well, and trying to push. Uh, the arcades and the retro stuff at my events as well. Mm. Well, that's um, actually that leads us on to a, a, an early point about LAN parties, the the social aspect of it, and the fact that like we've got a friend who bring who brings along um, a MAME emulator, like a box that's set up with joysticks and a separate PC in a separate room, and we just we'd just go in there whenever we were sick of playing games. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when we were sick of playing games. games. Yeah, and we'd move, we'd move into the other room and have a game. And it's, it's really great because you've got access to, you know, libraries are full of the stuff. But anyway, for anybody who does not know what a LAN party is, I think I'm probably talking to our target audience with, you know, people who've probably been to LAN parties or at least aware of what they are. But just in case, uh, a LAN party is a gathering of geeks and we sit together in a single room or in multiple rooms and play games together, usually PCs. Yeah, we have been to LAN parties previously, uh, where they've had, as I said, we've had the emulators on, we've had the um, uh, the arcade emulators, we've had, uh, we've even had people bring consoles before, maybe play things like Rock Band or, you know, there's all kinds of things that go on a LAN party, and depending on the level of organisation that you have and the level of kind of professionalism, you uh, you you might have, you know, other professional gamers that might go there and do big events and you know it's it's a kind of a central place for gamers to get together if it's not you know the internet um but yeah so i said one of the, uh, one of the first things that i i, I always talk uh, always think about when i when i'm going to go to a LAN party is you know what other things are going on yeah and it is a social event isn't it i mean the, the thing is it's it's all about bigging up a local player um multiplayer in the past was about sitting around a computer with a couple of joysticks, so everyone ran one keyboard if you're that old, mm. um, and playing games together on one screen or on a couple of screens and sitting around and having a few beers, having a laugh about it. And it's a completely di different atmosphere to playing online. Yeah. Um, it's a really nice atmosphere most of the time. Well, that's the comparison well, as well that you can time, make. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can also get a lot of politics. It's like it's like working in an office, going to a LAN party sometimes. You get a lot of people uh, who can get a bit het up, het up at the, uh, at the <laughs> events. I mean, with uh, with with LAN parties, I've I've always gone for the the community side of things, just because 
I, I mean, I've, I've been, I've, I, I did quick semi-professionally and things like that, and I've done the professional lands. Uh, I've run a professional land that didn't didn't go quite as well, but it's just because I think, well, we did this. I think about 2009, just just before the big boom of uh, esports really came in, so that might have been a factor for it. But um, community is a massive thing for me with um, with the lands, bringing bringing people in and just. It's just like-minded people at the end of the day, just coming together and, and playing games. And you know what what's what's not like to like about that? Just getting more people in, more get, getting more friends. And you know, one thing that makes me makes me why I still go to LAN parties. It makes me feel a little bit better about myself quite often because <laughs> there's always someone there who's more geeky than you and who is it oh, who is further oh, yeah. in that geek pit. You know. <laughs> Yeah, is that what you can all answer? No, of course it isn't. No, no, no. It just just dawned on me then that it, you do all. You see lots of different types of people. You see people who are professional geeks and people yeah. who are just hobby geeks, and then you get the bedroom dwellers. You know, the basement dwellers that you know don't wash themselves and you know, that kind of thing. You know, so, there's, <laughs> there's, there's always one in particular there. No, 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 no one in particular. I was actually thinking, I know who you're thinking of. However, I wasn't thinking of that person. I was actually thinking of someone random that we don't know that I saw at a LAN party once. But yeah. Uh. Yes, um, there's always, I mean, having showers and facilities is is always a thing at, um, at, at LAN parties. And mm. they're not always used by everybody, but. You can usually tell the people who don't use it and the people who do, so <laughs> you'll stay away from the people who don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's actually a, a, a massive thing. I've, 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 I've only been to a couple of lands which have had shower facilities, and that's a huge bonus. Mm. Just to be because you're there for, you know, the, the best part of three days, and you're sat in a really what's normally either a really hot room or just really close to other people. Yeah. Um, and it's just, like if it's not if it's not your beer, it's going to be somebody else's on you. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, so it's it's nice to be able to have a shower a couple of times during LAN. Yeah. I'm trying to think to the, the last LAN ops that we we went to or I went to anyway. It was at the Civic Hall. Um, uh, the John Field Civic Hall. Did yeah. that have did that have showers? I know it had a kitchen and I think it did. Bedrooms, but you know. <laughs> I, had, I can't remember if it had a shower. The new venue has got a shower, but I don't know if the old one has. Um, yeah, I can't remember ever having a shower if if it was there. So I was probably one of them, one of them smack stinky uh, ones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, so, so was I. So, but yeah, I, all, all I remember from that um, event, uh, venue really is the when it snowed and mm. well, uh, one one of the other admins managed to crash his car into a lamp post going to get the Chinese for everybody. So <laughs> <laughs> I remember I, I, I tried to get home and had to come back for some reason and I stayed overnight when I was going to go home the night before or something. I can't remember. Yeah. It was a, it was a bit of a mental one. But yeah, I mean, I, I personally, for me, the, the thing I enjoy about LAN parties the most, in all seriousness, is the social event, the social yeah. atmosphere. It's the, it's the fact that I get to see my friends and I get to hang around with a group of people who are socially um, and... Uh, kind of mentally into the same things that I am and it makes a big difference because you can you know you can make friends with with people in the real world you know you can make friends with uh, people at work and that but it, they never you know they never have the same interests but I tend to find that at LAN parties everybody tends to be approachable in the ones that I've been to anyway yeah I know there that are, it's... there are lands I mean mentioning no names there are lands where I find that it is. It's harder to get into the their their click, their niche, mm. uh, and if you don't fit into their click, you don't tend to fit in with that that land, that event, and you seem to. I mean, like we went to the, this event, and we went as just the LANOPS admins, and there were four of us, and we ended up, you know, trying to branch out. We didn't really find ourselves getting anywhere, so. We ended up just playing games on his own, so it was like, well, what, what's what's the point? Did you so, go? Did you go to network? Was that the idea, or did you um, go to do? No, we 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 don't we don't go to a land specifically to network our land because it's always it's like, well, it, it just seems a bit underhanded, really. Yeah, but <laughs> it, we 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 will go with his land ops t-shirts on or uh, with uh, as as PCs. Well, obviously we'll go with PCs, but they all say they've all got land ops stickers on things like that. Um, so we do go to lands as LAN ops, but we don't go to network as such. We just go to just just to have fun, just to well have have a LAN without having to worry about running it. Yeah, yeah. 
and that takes that takes us on to another point that we actually discussed last weekend. Um, me, Lou, Steve, uh, and Sam actually. Sam popped over to see us, and one of our other friends, Greg. We had a land last last weekend to play Borderlands, uh, the pre sequel, and we were saying there that it's there's something about the smaller lands that makes it a bit more special because as you just said you can have a massive land you know you could have 150 thousand people there or whatever and if you're not playing games together what's the point really unless you're yeah, just you, going you, for meeting you, new people you end up with little groups of people playing games in amongst a big crowd of people all doing the same sort of thing <laughs> in the end and i've been to the big lands i've been to lands of 150 people where it's been me and kind of four or five other people who've just sat playing the games that we normally play but together on like it's very strange and there is a kind of critical mass isn't there there's a there's a there's i guess th there isn't such a thing as too small a land because you can you know take your computer around a friend's house and play games like that and i've i've enjoyed stuff like that but there is such t there is such a thing as a too big plan for me i think yeah. i don't necessarily think the size is the problem i think organizing it in a coherent fashion is the problem and i think some lands i've been to have been really good at that and other lands have failed a little bit at it um one of the lands that we we used to admin at um it's well dead now but i believe i believe a few of the people who attended that lander in the chat today um Bad Land Rising in the northeast we were yeah. we were involved in that fright right, right from the start and uh that it did seem to have quite a good organization vibe going on you did still have pockets of people playing different things and you didn't necessarily go and speak to everyone but i don't know there's something about the vibe there that was a bit different i quite enjoyed it i don't i don't think it disappeared either i think the land just stopped you know that the atmosphere didn't change in my eyes yeah yeah it was it was good BLR. i mean you uh, myself and steve were all admins at blr and uh it went on for a long time I mean, that's how i met you at the first blr yep that was in uh, 99, I believe. Mm -hmm. And it Something ran like through till about 2004, I think the last one was. So it had a good run um, through the kind of golden age of gaming from kind of, you know, quick two days to kind of ending at the Counter-Strike, mid kind of the, the, the middle of the Counter-Strike 1.6 yeah. era. I, I, I kind of lost track of what eras they are in gaming, you know, what, what games are big. And I know that... Dota and League of Legends are quite big now in in general in game in the gaming mm -hmm. community. But you I'm mentioned very hard to run a LAN on. Very well, hard I, game to run a LAN on. Yeah, and this this is the thing that um, this is the thing that bothers me recently with gaming is that gaming has moved away from LANs to the point yeah. where gaming gaming is now online only in many respects. Um, I don't think you can play Dota or League of Legends on any kind of dedicated server or LAN server. It's all. No. On the internet, isn't it? Hmm. Um, and that's yeah. the same with most games. Battlefield <coughs> is the same. Um, pretty much any a terrible game for it. Yeah, pretty much any game you care to mention these days is online only, and that's really kind of pulled the rug from under Land's feet because if there used to be a reason to go to Land's, and that was because you had a rubbish connection. You, you know, you're on a modem at home. You go to a land where you could, you could have a 10 meg or 100 meg connection to the people. You'd have no lag. Um, a really low ping you'd be able to share files and stuff like that it was it enabled you to do stuff that you couldn't do online and as yeah. broadband's taken over as games have become online only there's now less of a there's the, the only reason left to go to lands is to socialize with people yeah uh, there's there's a social th aspect and then there's the competitive side which kind of splits the lands in two so you've got your social lands and then your competitive lands so um you've got i series which i series is it's, i think it's more than a land now it's gone on to more of a, a, a gaming festival um because there's there's so much stuff to do now um it's, it's a full um i mean they have, they have the, the, the entire floor uh, one of the entire floors just for showcasing products of you know, Gigabyte's new products, Alienware's new products, yeah. lots of uh, competitions. It's more of a, a festival, a, a convention than an actual LAN party now. Mm. Uh, you've got Epic LAN, which is... They've gone for both, um, which is interesting. It's taken a few LANs to get it working, but they've got the social side of it and then the competitive side, which are in two different uh, sections of the LAN. They're not mixed. Um, so your social side's more focused around your big games and things like that. And then 
your competitive sides, uh, obviously, it's all your, your tournament style games. Um, but even then, you can see a, a bit of a contrast in what games are actually played in terms of the competitive games, which are like your, your StarCraft. You've got TF2, kind of, but it's more of a, a fun game, which mm. TF2 is one of the good ones because it actually allows you to do LAN games, LAN servers. Yeah. But you've got StarCraft, Dota, League of Legends, um, Quake to an extent. Really? Uh, Still? Mate, Quake um, Live. Quake Live, yeah, ah. to an extent. Quake, Quake 3 is dead, unfortunately. <laughs> um, There's only Brandon uh, that wants to play that left. <laughs> <laughs> no, he still wants to play uh, Quake World, doesn't he? Actually, yeah, he was into Quake World, wasn't <laughs> he? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, what else have you got? Um, Call of Duty 4, kind of, oh, it's kind of dying off now. Um, so the majority of those games, they're all server-based games, like online mm. servers, authentication servers, which there isn't any LAN support for them. Even with Quake Live, a game that was, you know, Quake was well known for being a, a, a staple LAN game, and now Quake Live hasn't got a LAN server or anything. Mm. Yeah. So it's... A lot of the games, they seem to be going to more towards the internet base, but at the same time, what LAN now hasn't got internet connection. Yeah. Well, so I, it, yeah. It's, it was, it's, I remember it's a being a big problem. Sword, really. I remember it being a big problem now because I don't think any of the BLRs had an internet connection whatsoever. Oh, I mean, everyone basically, it. you'd have to, the, the, the night before, the morning before you put your computer to the LAN, you had to make sure that Steam had updated all your games. <laughs> and then got, get there and realise that you needed a patch for something and then someone happened to have it on a CD or on a computer or something. But you, you were basically cut off from the internet, but it didn't really matter. No, I mean, when when I started LANing, I, mean, I started LANing uh, before Steam I think Steam was just in beta at the time. It wasn't big anyway, so nobody had Steam. And it, there was no internet, and it was a day lab, one day lab, not a weekend. So we'd roll up at like 8 o'clock on the Saturday morning and play through till 10 o'clock at night. But we had to roll up with all of his games updated and everything. Yeah. If, if and for if instance, every... somebody had to download, uh, install a Battlefield game, <laughs> they were well, out, out of the game. I know that one of the, the again that the BLR lands to solve that problem. Um, the the main host would bring a server which was just for file serving, and he'd have yeah. every single patch, every single thing he could download from File Planet and all the other places that you need to get Look from. File Planet, absolutely ridiculous. Jeez. It was, I mean, it was it was gigabytes back then, but you know, it's that was big back then. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, I, yeah, to do that for the original LAN ops. So, Steve, we haven't heard much from you. Then, what's your favourite part of a LAN? What are you? Uh, <coughs> what What do you go for? Me, <laughs> just for Lou, Lou and Lou alone. No, it's it is the social aspect. Um, we've discussed it uh, earlier on about uh, how LANs have kind of evolved. But I've always found found one theme that's kind of followed it through, and you do get a segregation by by game. I find sometimes. Uh, you, Mm. I think I think it depends on. I mean, look at us, the, 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 our group. Not everyone likes the same games. It does become a little bit of a problem sometimes. Uh, you know, if we all want to arrange, say, a four v four game, or we want to play a bigger game like Tribes that needs a lot of people to play it. We've, ve I think, we've had maybe one successful game of Tribes for the entire yeah, but that's time. Because when we were at LAN parties and we were looking to play games of Tribes, we only actually looked within the group of people that we'd taken with us and not further afield. Yeah, but... No, it, we, we did ask around, we did share... We asked around, but, but then like people didn't really seem very willing to to join a game they'd never played before. Exactly. Or try no one knew they were all kind of insular within their own little groups where they played CS and played this, that and the other. Yeah. So you didn't really uh, tend to get a lot of crossover on games. Which is, it's a good point with with running lands, um, trying to get people into the games. I mean, I'm not I'm I'm not the the guy who shouts out at the lands. I've, we've got somebody else for that, and is the storm bless him. He's, he's he's got a big mouth. Is is more broad Yorkshire than me, and everybody listens because it's just his voice, and that's it. Um, but trying to get people into games is so hard. I mean, you can have the right internet system. All of the um, shout outs say, you know, this game's going to start in 10 minutes. Do you want to play? And as soon as you say, right, this game's, game's starting, 
Oh, oh, I, I want to play that game. Or there won't be enough people to play that game. So you're going around trying to see, do you want to play this game? Do you want to play this game? And trying to get them into the game. And it's like, oh, I don't know. Like, it, for TF2, it's a free game. We've got a content server that will download TF2 in a matter of seconds. It It's all there, ready for you to go. Do you want to play TF2? Oh, I don't know. I don't. I don't really know I, that game. I wouldn't want to play TF2 at a LAN because it's crap. I mean, <laughs> I <do like> that, <laughs> that aside, <laughs> if you don't know the game, yeah, it yeah. puts people off. It yeah. really does because it's like, well, they automatically think they're going to be shit because it's they don't know the game. So it's trying <clears> trying <throat> to get games, picking games that work well that you can just pick up and go. I mean, I've just noticed somebody uh, put Halo 2 um, in the chat. I mean, I'd never Halo 2 I didn't play because it was Windows 7 only, uh, Windows Vista only. And that, that was bollocks. Uh, but Halo 1 on LAN was a fantastic game because you couldn't not you couldn't not know what to do. Capture the Flag was so simple on it. The UI was so easy. It, especially, I think it was Blood Gulch was one of the maps. Ah, oh, yes, mm. brilliant map. There's nothing to learn. It's just a big, big. Yeah, exactly. It's it's just one massive. There's no way to get in and out. Oval. Yeah. No way to get in and out of it. But there's two bases yeah. already perfectly set. How did they get the machinery in there to make the bases? And it's wrong. There's Locked a lot of things wrong with the Halo universe. But no, that aside, Where's Terraria makes so much sense. Doesn't it? <laughs> Rocket boots and speed boots and stick a horseshoe on them, and you get Flying yeah, eyes brilliant. And Paddington bear the zombie. Yeah. That's awesome. No, I, know, I know what you're saying about Halo. And I, you know, you're, you're probably one of the few PC gamers who does actually enjoy Halo. Um, I really like Halo, but most of the rest of the people I know who are PC owners hated the game. Can't stand it. I, you know I why? It's because it's Halo One because it was good. Halo Two, I didn't play because it was Vista only. <clears throat> I didn't play the rest because they were console only. Mm. It's so. it's overhype. That's what the problem is. It we'd mm. already played games that good or better on the PC when it came out, and it came out, and we were like, right, so what? All right, I played it. Yeah, all right. What hogs are cool? It's about it. The thing that is, is literally about it. The thing <laughs> oh, is, it's what it's what Thorne just said though. It's a very accessible game. You don't need to be, you you know, you don't need to master all of the moves or anything like that. You just jump into it and play it, and it's a fun game right from the beginning. You got really nice vehicles. You got nice physics. You got a really good feel, a solid feel of the game, and it's just fun. The feedback from actually shooting somebody as well, it felt satisfying. Actually, you know getting somebody nailed in the head. Yeah. I mean, you have games like Quake. I mean, UT was more favoured over Quake in the the newer players because, mm. or at least I found, because UT was a more a col more colourful game, more, the, the graphics were a bit, yeah, uh, definitely. a bit more um, appealing. And the games, even, even on 1v1, tend to lend itself more to towards new players as opposed to punishing you for not knowing the maps or not knowing the timers like it did on Quake. We yeah. still did that in UT, but not to the same extent. You could pick it up a lot easier. Mm. Um, Quake was... I mean, the, the new the new uh, changes to Quake, I think, are fantastic uh, for the for new players. Absolutely amazing. Um, but it's, it's still UT jumping in, picking up weapons, running around. You're still going to get absolutely ransacked by the guys who play the game all the time but at least you know that you get you going around and you at least doing something in the game yeah. which is it's, it's a massive factor in getting people into playing the games and yeah nobody as long as, they, as long as they know what they're doing mm. yeah they don't want to be cannon fodder basically yeah, and the skill, the skill level between someone who's not that good at UT and someone who's really good at UT is not the same as the skill level between someone who's just starting out in Quake World and someone who's been playing like Reppy, yeah, like all the life. It's it, it, there's a crazy kind of chasm of a skill gap between top end and bottom end players in Quake. Whereas well, look at what happened to us this weekend with that Quake match. I haven't <laughs> played Quake Two for so long. We had a duel. Um, the first game was a write off. I'm not letting him have that one at all because I was I was using. <laughs> and, right, Did Lewis win? <laughs> no, he won both. He won both games. But I mean, it used to be quite close, but he, he trounced me utterly, trounced me. And 
that I'm using the excuse that my config has changed. I used to strafe so with my, my config. That's my excuse. Sorry. I used to <laughs> I used to strafe with my mouse button. I used to have three hands, but now I've only got two. So and, uh, I can play and as then well, you I'd jump with A and I'd fire with D instead of strafe with them. So I'd w, w A S D it, but I'd jump with A and fire with. D. That's what I always did. So mm -hmm. I got used to bunny hopping with that, and I got used yeah. to like well everything in the game basically. And now I went back into the game and I haven't played Quake 2 since I changed my config. And I changed my config because I went to, uh, I started using Unity. Um, and Unity, you can't rebind the keys for the editor. So you, you're flying around in a game world with WASD and strafing. So I rebound all my keys in all of my games. Went into Quake 2, played it, couldn't bunny hop. I had absolute. My fingers just would not do it. I was. I've got a recording of my video. I'm just like jumping up and down and not moving any faster. Um, and every time I tried to shoot, I was strafing. And every time I was trying to strafe, I was shooting. So I, I was just firing rockets on the floor and railing the sky, and it was ridiculous. You know. I, I, in case, in case it's not obvious. Chris used to strafe with the mouse buttons. Yeah, which nobody else on the planet weird does. Is that? I, don't, I think. I think I'm the only person. But. I was quite good at Quake too with that config, you know. You were like I can't, um, I can't actually think of a. a well, I, no, these days you can't use those. You can't use left and right click in some games like um, Skyrim. Skyrim, I couldn't do it. I couldn't bind the keys because they were they were hard yeah. bound to use or fire oh, or whatever. It does my head in that. Yeah. Some games do that, and it's. I mean, Lou has the same problem being a lefty. He uses the arrow keys like a proper girl, but. Um, <laughs> But it's because he's a bit simple, girl. he needs to go, which way's up? Oh, it's the up key. Which yeah. way's left? Uh, it's the left key. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I, I, <laughs> that's my excuse. But yeah, so this this weekend at the LAN, we uh, we had a, had a few games of a few things, and I have seen the problem with um, a lot of these a lot of these games coming out and them not having dedicated servers, as we've already said. We found one that does, which I'm going to mention again. It's a new Metal Gear Solid, guys. It's Terraria. Oh, right. <laughs> no, I, uh, I'm oh, utterly addicted to it, as I said. And But it's got a dedicated server, which is cool, and it's nice to just be able to open a port and people can get on the game, and there's no faffing, like, at all. Forget the game. The fact that that can happen is amazing these days, you know? We went backwards. Yeah, to be honest, a game like that, if it didn't have a dedicated server... It would be horrible. <laughs> so Whoa, bad. The been... amount of griefing and like, we've I mean, been if playing it's a bit it. like a cloud service sort of, where you you get your own section, maybe. But mm. well, what what we've got at the moment, the way that it works is, or with the way we've been work, working with it, we haven't run the dedicated server yet. We've just been playing host and join or whatever it's called in the game, and it, it, I have the world. These guys joined my world, and then I I save the world, but they can save their player characters and items on their own computers so it's a bit weird but you can carry your characters around different different worlds it's it's crazy that's that's a cool way of doing it yeah i quite like that it's also very exploitable as well because i've just went into my old yeah. saves from a while back and i've just got all of the items that i've i got so i've now got tweaking absolutely yourself. yeah i'm tweaking and twinking yeah i'm twinking my i suppose <laughs> it's not a cheat is it because everyone does it in bloody everquest and everything else don't they? <clears throat> Just because everyone does it doesn't make it right. No, you're right. And plus, there's no levels in this, so it's not quite twinking, is it? You have to. If twinking is items that are better than your character's level, usually, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Twinking, oh, or just, just giving well. good. Yeah, just giving good gear to your uh, yeah. to lower level characters. Yeah. Move, moving back onto lands. Hmm? Um, <coughs> Let's talk about dedicated the, servers. Uh, yeah. I know you're very happy about it. We all know. You can stop talking about you can, it. You can stop playing with us then if you're going to be like that. <laughs> Bad off the server. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> so I'll, I'll make my own world. Do it. No, I won't. Go back to complexity. Um, I think that's... Uh, a game being too complicated to actually just just pick up and play, I think is uh, one of the reasons why it wouldn't take off. I like Tribes. Tribes is a fantastic game. The Tribes would be excellent with a full server. But people saw us play it. People even got the point where they installed it themselves, did not have a clue what to do. Got like destroyed in the first few seconds and then just didn't bother mm. playing anymore. Yeah. So as far as uh, successful games for lands, unless you already know the game inside out, in which case you will be playing with your own group of friends because they're the people that you play with and they'll know it as well. You need to have these games so they're like instantly accessible 
Yeah, I think a lot of the best experience I've had at Lands have been playing new games. Like everyone just deciding to install some new game and all playing it, and all being rubbish at it, but all enjoying it anyway. You know, you can get too invested in a game where it becomes frustrating to lose at it. But when you're all equally crap at a game and you don't know what you're doing, that's fun. Well, well weren't we like that with Battlezone Two though? Originally. We all yeah. played, we all got on a server, played Battlezone 2, and some of us advanced a lot quicker than others. I, again, got quite good at that game and ended up destroying everybody, just building up a huge army. But love it, because only because I loved the game, and I was really, yeah. really into that ca that style of gameplay. But it takes a long time and a lot of investment to get anywhere near that, you know? And how many games are easy to play from start off? I mean, you say UT, but I still think it's got a learning curve. It does, but not, yeah, not as much has. as quick. I, th I think you need to be able to get into the game and be competent at it within what half an hour, an hour. Maybe that's in order why for it to be practical for a land. Maybe that's why yeah. Call of Duty and that are, are popular. I mean, well, Battlefield Three and Two—they're not easy games to play. They're are they? really hard games. Battlefield Three is one of the hardest games I've ever played. But they're, yeah, also but they're just extensions of the old ones, though, aren't they? So as long as you've played a Battlefield game, then you're pretty yeah. much or what you're doing. Do these extras, does it? Yeah. I guess so, yeah. I know where you're coming from, but it's still it's still a kind of I mean I'd never I hadn't played Battle Three Field Three and I think I got it at one of our lands and played with Greg and Greg had been hammering it and, and Greg, he, he, Greg was at the top of the leaderboard uh, at one point. He was yeah. not at the top but he was in the top five hundred players in the world or something. Yeah. he's he got addicted to it and but I, I played it with him and he just ran I, I had no idea what was going on. So mm. complicated. There's so many things mm. in that game. But I mean I'm I would, again got quite good at it, but I don't know, it's it's a hard one to call, isn't it? Because how can you how can you criticize groups of people from getting you know, making little clicks up if that's the parameters that we've got, you know, if we can't exactly, it, it's it's not real. I mean, I I quite like the fact that I played with my friends. I'd rather play with my friends than play with some random stranger over the other side of the room and get really excited in a game and then shout some over the room to them and they get offended because they don't get the same sense, <coughs> sense of humour or something like that. You know, it's remember you're in a room full of geeks. You're in a room full of socially awkward people generally. <laughs> is this Sothorno? Is this is this probably? A good reason to have stuff like the um, the tourneys and the the competitive aspects because then you kind of force some people to play games with each other aren't you yeah um where they I naturally we, might not tend to do so we usually we usually force well not have those force is the wrong word <laughs> we'll uh, play the game. Get the game. No. <laughs> um no we we, we have a, a timetable up and we usually say you know we're gonna have a big game at this time there's gonna be a, a, a a tournament at this time, so big games will consist of stuff like uh, Unreal Tournament death matches, TF2, um, Crisis Two, which I won one line. Um, oh, I, I do want to put. I, I like playing Crisis. I think it's a good, fun game. Crisis Two, especially. The but, thing, the thing about yeah. that was, is I had not played Crisis Two multiplayer when I played it, and I, I won. Every, I beat everybody somehow, and, I, and I'm sure other people <laughs> have played multiplayer before me. But I, I ran around with a pistol most of the time. I just happened to get right the right kills. The Weird. pistol <laughs> in that game was was ridiculous. But yeah, um, so we have the big games, and then we have the tournament games, like um, the one v one games. Uh, again, Quake or UT. Um, just thinking, what else we got next land? Uh, Subcom, uh, an RTS, something like that. We usually we go for Subcom just because. That's what's generally played most in within our LAN, um, right. but at, at bigger uh, other lands, it's usually StarCraft. As, uh, so are you, you, know. are you, talk, you yeah. talking about Supreme Commander? Yeah, yeah Supreme right. uh, Super Commander, sorry, yeah. Is that in two you're playing? No, just Supreme Commander 1. All right. I've only uh, got two myself. I haven't played I, it I've yet. never <laughs> played two, but I it's heard awful. it wasn't great. So, Square yeah. Enix got involved and it just ruined it like they ruined every game they get involved with. Bastards. That's probably why I got it free in Humble Bundle or something. So yeah, we have the, these are the games that um, we have scheduled. We release the the timetable on the website, on the Facebook, and say, you know, they were in these games at this time. If you want to join in, here's the internet, sign up on the internet, and then we'll just go from there. So that's they're the big games for trying to get people in and playing together. Then there's like downtime between that for them to play whatever which is going to be wow at the next land because it's the day after uh, the 
World of Warcraft release. That, so that's another point as well. Playing. That tends to happen quite a lot, doesn't it? I mean, look, we had a LAN just to play Borderlands, a pre-sequel, but we didn't. We ended up playing Terraria probably more than that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we, we do we do have LAN specifically for <laughs> types, of th types of things, but it depends on the people that are coming again. Yeah, I mean, we, I'm, I'm going into running like specified events for uh, console uh, LAN parties as well as... Um, Specified events for theme, themed events, Minecraft or surely parties cons or whatever. Con like modern day consoles, I haven't ever tried to do like link up or do something in the same house as someone else on a console, so I don't know how this works now. Do they have a local setting, or do you have to be on like no. Xbox Live or PSN? It's, or? Yeah, it's you still got to go through all their servers. So so long as you've got a connection to the internet, you're fine. Um, and then you've obviously, I think, I can't remember 100%, but I think they've got like a community styled um, deal where if you're on the same network, it picks up you're on the same network and says, oh, this, this user's on the same network, he's playing this game, do you want to join this game like he's a friend? Oh, right, okay. Um, a bit like they did on with Left 4 Dead, because uh, if Left 4 Dead picked up, the Left 4 Dead uh, server browser is fantastic, by the way. Never uh, used to be. It used to be terrible. Yeah, I mean, you get you get the standard server browser, which you can just pick through all your all your servers, no problem. Then you've got your your internet servers, your LAN servers, your favorited, uh, your filters, blah blah blah. Then it's, you've got your just normal f fine servers, but it also picks up all of the community servers, which community servers are servers that are just on your network. So it'll pick those up before it'll find any other server and say, "Do you want to join these?" Yes. But it's just that's just so easy doing the lobby system, but joining to actual servers instead of the cloud madness that like Call of Duty is brought into. Well, that's that's what GameSpy used to let us do, didn't it? Back in the day, open GameSpy yeah. up and it had a local section, and you could like browse the local broadcast or master servers or whatever. Again, BLR, we had that set up. We had it. We had a, a yeah, local yeah. GameSpy master server, and it, all of the game servers were listed there. And you could just start any game from GameSpy. It was brilliant back in the day. Now it's all Steam, isn't it? I say brilliant. Yeah. We hated GameSpy, didn't we, back then? <laughs> GameSpy Game universally <laughs> hated. I don't know. It, it was. I mean, I how foul plan it was. Yeah. Wasn't wasn't Game wasn't GameSpy bought and bought out by all C and I? Was that just the file the the game browser that they had? I'm not sure uh, where I'll be honest no, with you. I'm not entirely sure. No, all C and I came kind of came out and replaced GameSpy, and I, th I think GameSpy bought. All C and I, possibly. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, because of... what one of the others. Yeah. yeah. Where are they now back as well? Back in the day, back in the day when you had external ser server browsers. Back yeah. in the day when, when you, could, you could dial up to Barry's World and you know get your get your you know, my screaming dot net connection and my free serve internet connection <laughs> where nobody else used it in the entire town, and there was it was speedy as. But still not as good as a LAN. Again, that used to be the the, the reason. I, th I think Lou mentioned it earlier for going to a LAN was the fact that I could access my friend's computer and play with my friends on a zero ping, mm -hmm. or or I could download files off my friends over a ten meg network or whatever. You know, I mean the, the fact that uh, the original Quake um, they built the, when Carmack Romero and the rest of the gods at id did the business on Quake. Um, when they actually made Quake One, they made it. They made the the, the online part on on the LAN network on, or on sorry on high speed internet. Yeah. Um, which not everybody had. In mm. fact, a very small percentage of people had high speed internet at that time. So when the game actually came out, there was a lot of problems with people lagging online. And it had just, no prediction, did it? So it, it, there was no prediction or, or anything <laughs> like that. That all came into um, Quake World, which came out a year later. Yeah. Which when they fixed everything. Um, so that was, yeah, there, there was, it was a big thing going to a LAN parties because the, the, the amount of times you know you'd be you'd be just playing away on the on your dial-up connection, and then somebody would go pick up the phone line, it'd mm -hmm. drop your connection, you've dropped out your game. Mom, what are you doing? Yeah. I was just having a clan match. <laughs> Etc. I mean, Command and Conquer, um, Red Alert One, and Tiberian Sun. I played that online quite a lot when I had a dial-up connection. The amount of times we had the phone pick up and then 
connection lost and was like, I'm about to win that. There was oh, no server, there was no maintained state or anything, you just lose everything too, yeah. Just gone. The problem with no, those no, type of no games reason. as well is that you have to invest quite a lot of hours in order to get through to the end of uh, the Command and Conquer game. Yeah, yeah it was a well, 15 minute um, skirmish, was it? Well, no, yeah, <laughs> depending on the level you played at, uh, I think if you played at a casual level, then RTS games can go on for hours. If you play at any kind of competitive level, the games last for 15 minutes tops. Yeah. And and you, you're killing there. someone with your, your low level unit, you're just rushing them with, the, with yeah. scouts. Even Supreme Commander games, you know, they, the, the, the mass one. scale of the game, they, they can last hours and hours. But the, even the, 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 but with the competitive side of things, when you watch the pros play it, they'll last about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, which kind of takes the fun out of it for me, though. Yeah, I, I, I do like the turtling and things like that. But I mean, I have been watching a lot of, uh, I mean, Generals Gentlemen on YouTube. Uh, they do a lot of um, shoutcasts for professional or competitive uh, Command and Conquer play. They do uh, Company Vero's as well. Right. And I've been watching quite a few of those guys, and you definitely see that the Command and Conquer games, on average, last longer than your average StarCraft game. StarCraft tends to last about 10 minutes or so, and then you've got your Command and Conquer games lasting 20, 30 minutes. But again, it's it's a different styles of RTS. I think StarCraft was made more towards a, a competitive, um, a competitive audience. Audience, that's the word. Yeah. Uh, just before right. we go off this topic too much, just I just want to mention this: is uh, there's a caster on YouTube called Guile, who does Supreme Commander casts, uh, but he does e um, epic games, which are games that last more than an hour, and they're really good fun to watch if you want really long. Matches with good players, so let's give me a little shout out, Guile. I am gonna just put a question out there to the audience and to you guys, and I'm gonna let give you a little bit of time to think about it because <coughs> it's I'm sure it's something that won't come straight to your head. What is your favourite LAN experience? I if, you've, know mine. if you've already got one, then we can <laughs> we can always talk about it now, or we can leave it a little bit. Looks like Steve and Thorno are both like. Don't remember any of the lands I've been I'm, to I'm, now. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll let you have a think about it. Yeah, I can't, I can't no, I've got too many. I've got too many. Um, I I can't. I don't even know why I asked that question because I can't really think of anything right now. But let's. I'll try let's, to think of something. Yes. Yeah. We'll we'll answer it at the end. We'll answer it at okay. the end of the, uh, yeah. end of the show. To say. <laughs> so, so what about uh, first lands then? Why did you go to a land in the first place? What drew you to it? I was weird. Oh. weird. I mean, I, I was actually probably in the same situation as Chris. Someone contacted me called um, Alan, um, and he said he was having a LAN at his uh, at his work basically a at LAN. the weekend. Yeah, I didn't know what a <laughs> LAN was. He said I needed an NIC, and I didn't know what an NIC was. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I had no idea. What uh, is this computer ship thing? <laughs> so then he told me that he told me that it was a network card, and I, I, as long as I buy something which wasn't real tech, it'd be fine. Back when motherboards <laughs> didn't have it built um, into them. Yeah, so oh, I bought yeah. a network card, and I, I took my computer along, and um, we had to take our shoes off <laughs> because he just like they had new carpets in his place of work, and uh, so we took our shoes off and we went in and connected our computers. It was about twelve, ten, twelve people there, um, and then we played quick. Two, uh, not was it Quake Two? Quake Two, and uh, a lot of people were playing uh, Red Alert Two. Oh God, here it is. There you That's go. not an old one. The old ones were massive. Oh no, I've got a few of them as well. Um, my if... first network card's bigger than my current graphics card. Oh, guess what it is though? It's an RTL eight one three nine B. That's a real tech. Real tech, yeah. <laughs> I've there got was, a three com one somewhere. Apparently, the real tech ones didn't work properly with IPX, which is what Red Alert used. No, no, they didn't. So that was a big problem. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I remember going to that and not knowing what the hell was going on. I'd only been playing Quake 2 for about six months or so. And I'm, I sat next to you, Chris, didn't I? Uh, you at the yeah. first LAN? Yes, yes, I was there. I, so it was you and uh, Pav, <coughs> wasn't it? No, no, Pav. No, I didn't oh, even Pav know Pav, the Pav second then. One. Yeah. No, no, I think it was well after that. I didn't know Pav at all, I don't think. Oh, well. But yeah, that, that's, that's where we met. And uh, I played some Quake 2, and you happened to play some Quake 2 as well. and. They all play you know what? Together. You know what attracted to me, me to you, Lou. What? Do you know what made me made me want to be your friend? Is it because I was more of a geek than you? It was <laughs> because the, you, your, the way that you used your computer, 
the way that you kind of that you you laid your desktop out and the way that you used Photoshop, I was like, that's pretty impressive. Back then, I was like, I I, ad I admired the fact that you could do all this stuff with graphics and make something out of nothing, and I was like, brilliant friend for life. Yeah, you can do all my graphics for me. Make corpse out of you and quit too as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was that. There was that. <laughs> I don't, I, yeah, but yeah, it, 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 with the first one we had, I think it was a. a silicone graphics process in place wasn't it that's where he worked or something like that it in... was a rapid prototype in place in yeah. the industrial estate right is it arc yep god i'm glad you remember that I no idea yeah. but anyway yes yeah, so um well one thing one thing that we have brought up a few times uh we haven't really addressed the issue though or, or addressed the uh, phenomenon of of the the land dying the mm. land is is slowly fading out, and we've talked I've, about. I've got a bit of a theory behind that. Go on then. Um, well, we all first went to lands because we needed low ping, and low ping was the best way to play games. And obviously, you went with your friends; it was a good experience. As the broadbands came in, um, there's been less need in order to go to these uh, these events in order to play games with low ping. You can do that now from the comfort of your own home, but yet we still do. We but do. We go in much smaller groups to play a much narrower range of games. So that's like the evolution from, well, my first experience, anyway, which is like everyone ram into a room and try and play as many games as you can and try and copy as many files as you can. And stay awake for as long as you can. Like, well, I was <laughs> going to mention the staying awake part later on. 32 because, cans of Red Bull at one line I had. Yeah, that's a discussion unto oh itself, God. I believe. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> in these days, that it explains purely, a lot, Lou. Sorry, <laughs> um, it's purely for the social aspect, and I don't think that I, th I think we're quite unique in that um, we have this kind of very tight knit group of friends that we have been playing games with and lands with, and that's persevered through. But you can't be more casual gamers that used to go to lands in order to play games just to play games. That need isn't there anymore, I don't mm. think. So unless you've got a specific purpose that like you compete in in a tournament um, or you want to expose or, so you want to get more exposure to the game and leagues or the professional players that are in there or you just want to break in then there's not a lot of call really there's there's, there's less attraction for people to go to land parties I, I'd be honest I, I, it doesn't appeal to me these days going to a larger land party you know and an organised event it's not that I think they're badly organised or anything like that it's just that I don't I don't know I think I'd rather just spend time with the friends that I've already put time and effort into, you know, than have to deal with people shouting at me over a microphone and, you know, everything else that goes on at lands. I mean, I wouldn't have any problem if, if we all arranged to go to, the, let's say, the next, uh, oh, next LAN Ops. Neither would I. That was going to be a thing. <coughs> I'd be quite excited about that. I was going to suggest that, actually. Would I participate yes, yes, come to in all of the events that are going on? Would I hell? I wouldn't. I'd go there and basically just play with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Probably... Yeah step into one or two other games outside of our little circle, watch a few of the tournaments, have a bit of a... Well, I was, was going to say socialise, but it's me, so I probably wouldn't socialise, but... <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think, I mean, I, I do talk to other people, but generally I don't really... I don't, I don't need to talk to those other people, you know. I'm going there to see you guys. I'm going there to see my friends. So that's why these groups form, isn't it? You know, everyone's the same, I think, to an extent. I mean, back when we used to have BLR, we used to have a lot of little kind of close-knit groups. There was our little group. Then I remember there was a few, there was a few clans that were always represented there, mm. and you always saw similar faces. And obviously, they were going for the same thing to meet up with the rest of the clan to have a bit of a social session as well as going in there to play. I did do a fair amount of recruitment for the LAN um, with other clans as well. So there were some clans within the Rocket Arena Two community that were, you know, the English one anyway, that that, that did turn up. And we did, I did meet a few of the people from our online community at LAN parties, uh, not loads because everyone was most people were down south, but it was still that I enjoyed because it was nice to put a face to the person that I was speaking to on an almost daily basis to arrange clan games and that, you know? Yeah, there was quite a lot of people that came from very far like, afield as well. Um, one of our clan members came all the way from the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah. A few just, times, actually. To spend the weekend with us. Unfortunately, he did get assaulted by the drunken bar staff. But yes! He, <laughs> I've he still never got came pictures back of again that. After that. <laughs> yeah. In fact, he didn't leave his house ever again after that. 
He did well, become a massive introvert. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's ruined him. She, yeah. Teesside ruined her. Ruined yeah. him. Oh God, Teesside. Well. <laughs> but I mean, does this does this mean that the land parties are dying though, or does I it just mean I that they're they become more specialised? I don't think they're dying as as what what you guys think anyway. Uh, they're not. If anything, they're gaining more popularity than they were. Um, we, we were put in our place last week um, by our guest Josie, who who we were talking about communities, and we were yeah. talking basically the same way that we're talking now. Our friend group is is everything when it comes to gaming with us because we've spent so much time together playing games, and yeah. we are actually real life friends as well. We're not just mm. online aliases, uh, and nearly everyone in the clan is like that. But we don't go to these events. We don't really care what's going on when we go to these events. We're very, we're kind of the old, you know, we're the old man sat in a corner with you, his. You're pipe. the old, old style of lamp party. Yeah, it's, and, that's and that's that's where it's changed. It's, it's moved on to the the bigger, the, the more social. Let's get drunk. Let's get pissed up and ha have play some games while while we're doing it. And then you've got the bigger. Well, it's always been styled. That. We've always yeah, had that as well, but you've got more more people coming in from the um, the less Real less world. the less nerdy people, the less it, it, the it's more casual it's, gamers. Yeah, the, you, you do get. It, I think it's it's gone less specialized. Like going on, on the opposite of what you've just said, Steve. It's going on less specialized and more. It's going to more towards the mainstream, the casual um, the this, side of yeah, things. This I've, is something that go on, Steve. Well, I was going to say when I said specialize, I didn't mean specializes in a, you, it's it's like a special thing for a person. I mean, isn't like now you get lands that are purely Minecraft, you get yeah. lands that are purely you know. Uh, so they are getting. I, I, I was trying for us to get more specialized in the actual content <coughs> that you're going there for. So you'll have a Minecraft land, and you get a lot of casual Minecraft players that wouldn't necessarily have went to a land going there just for that purpose. Yeah, I mean, uh, what potato power in in uh, chat just said. Younger people, they definitely do attract more younger people um, over <laughs> any, any, anybody. Um, what, one person that came to one of our BLR lands just popped in my head then, and I'll say the word relic. Yeah. <laughs> and he was he was quite young, but he was he he, he was a professional gamer, but he really I wasn't. He, 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 yeah, he was re he, and he used. On, I swear to God, you know, he, we were the admins, and we sat on a little desk at the back. In order to gain favour with us, or with me at least, I don't know if he did it to the other admins, he burned some pawn onto a disc and gave it to us. And he was basically oh, trying God. to buy, like, I don't Best know. Best friend! Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> this is really weird. How old are you? Uh, <laughs> so, so, where did you get this from? Yeah. <laughs> is it legal? I, I didn't take it, by the way. I, I did say it. Oh, no, you, no, mate. No, no. I, I, Good. <laughs> so if you need to burn pawn to a CD at a LAN. Well, you did back then. I think oh, you I just copied it off the network. Yeah, but then no. But back when, back when there was hubs and there wasn't switches, that was not a thing you could do. Yeah. You couldn't copy stuff when hubs were a thing, and because oh, I don't know the technicalities behind it, but I know that. I, I remember the Sunday late afternoon when all the light, all the lights on all the switches and hubs <laughs> just got, went solid, solidly lit. The room got really, really just, hot. <laughs> every, every screen was just yeah. a, it was just a file copy dialogue with the entire planet flying at the folder. <laughs> yeah. So we're just waiting to get everything on the last yeah, night. Yeah. yeah, copy everything. <laughs> Are you downloading me? Uh, lands today, then Thorin. Do you, do you still get a lot of file sharing? If, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, we do. Um, one of the guys who uh, helps me to lands, uh, Kamani, he's actually built. I'm uh, sorry, coded his own um, file transfer program called. Where we FAP. use that? Yeah, FAP, yeah. Um, I still use that. <laughs> oh. It's it's in like I, th I think it's hit one of the releases now. It's it's been updated anyway since um, last LAN ops, and um, it's basically like DC plus plus where uh, everybody joins onto one hub and then y y you can get whatever. And it's used for we use it for downloading um, legal software and le legal legal <laughs> softwares off, off, um, off people's. Uh, but uh, you don't have to hash anything, which the massive ball ache with uh, DC++ is, you have to hash your entire share. Yeah. So you turn up to LAN, you install DC++, hashing all of your share, that'll take the entire LAN. By the end of the LAN, you sh you you've just finished hashing, and then you've got to go home. F FAP just does it all automatically. But it also 
uh, totals, the amount of shares on LAN. And I think we've had over 50 terabyte on LAN before, uh, <laughs> on share, uh, just from people bringing their servers, plugging them in and just being like, we'll, we'll leave it there, we'll see what people want. <laughs> That reminded me that there was a game as well that was developed at the land, wasn't it? Um, Ninja thing, that that sword thing. No, uh, no, there was one where it's spaceships. You built spaceships out of modules. Oh, Fortress Forever. Um, That's by it. By Projector Games. Yeah, uh, yeah. He used the guy who did. Um, yes. Yeah. Sorry, I just remembered. I've actually seen them at another event as well, and I can't remember yeah, where it was does, now. He does. He's done quite a few. We've been trying to get him back, but uh, he's 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 a busy man. I go. Uh, I go Fortress to a few. Craft, I think he did. Did yeah, he do he Fortress did. Craft as well? He's, he's Fortress Craft, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I yeah. didn't know that. That's, um, that's really that's interesting. That's cool. Sorry. Right. He's, he's, done, he's done quite a lot of really I've, interesting games. I've seen him. I, 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 just, I remember I saw him. I've seen him at some conventions from the game dev conventions I go to around uh, Liverpool, Manchester. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's been there with the same stuff on the, you know, on the screen. I'm sure I've seen him at another LAN as well, you know, with the screen up and the, the game running. Uh, Frag Did you do a stream yeah. with him? Me? No, 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 no. That was um. Fortress guy. Is that the on. same guy? Shit. It is. Andrew, it is. I think it is. And Adam. Yeah. No. Adam. No. Adam. Adam yeah. I, I know. I was thinking Adam of Dwarf Fortress for some reason because. Yeah. Oh, shit. That's... So I've actually sat and spoke to the guy. Adam Sorkins. That I, w I host another show. I used to host another <laughs> show with. <laughs> it's a small world, isn't it? It's a really uh, there, weird. I'm going to tell go. him. I'm going to tell him. Even men stick together. <laughs> We're going to tell He's... him. I once sat next to you. Yeah, the Adam Sorkins. No, no, I know him fairly well because of the, you know we've been doing this, the other show together. It's really weird that <laughs> I've actually seen him and spoke to him. I do remember his accent. Now I remember the guy sit sitting doing the, the the projector. I remember him speaking and it being like a real like southern softy accent, and it, it, it it's all coming to me. He's That's also really the guy weird. that inspired me to buy my uh, my Oculus as well. Yes. He's, he's the one who sold it to me on oh, that I stream do, that you I, did. I do want one. I, I think one. I think Projector Games is not what he did. He did um, he did Fortress Craft under though. I think that's another company. I think. Uh, no, I think he's moved it over now that it's come on to the Steam release. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, he, yeah, nice guy. Uh, mm. Very knowledgeable. Very strange that that happened. That I've met the guy before. Actually, <laughs> I'd have to mention that to him on Twitter. Actually. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Sidetracking a little bit. Yeah. So we were talking about the death of lands, but I think we kind of established that they've they've evolved, haven't they? Really. They've yeah. more yeah. They've more evolved into something else. They they're not. They're not. I mean, there are a massive glut of lands of people just going. Oh, I want to do a land party, like there has been with so many other nerdy and geeky style things. I mean, cosplays in the limelight at the moment with the the sheer amount of people and saturation of the market. Yeah. Comic Lam Con land parties. Yeah, land parties are exactly the same thing, and now it's kind of dying off. And it's still you still got a couple, or quite a few lands in the past. Six months or so have actually shut down. Some long running lands as well, Zombie Land being one of them. Uh, that went way down south, though. I think Devon actually. Um, but it's it's more moving into because, like I said, a lot of people what's the, they don't they think what's the point in going to the lands where they can just sit and play at home in their own comfort of the home home, be on uh, on Team Speak or whatever, just sit here and just play the game, whereas for some it is going to the lands and it's for what I've from what I've found anyway and what I've done with my lands it's the community mm -hmm. side of the lands that's the most prevalent part of bringing people back the fact that it's a social and friendly atmosphere of like-minded people that's yeah. that's the biggest selling point I think for for what's keeping lands social lands anyway obviously the the tournament style lands they've they've got the big prizes and the the showcase of oh look at these esports stars you know you can go up and sing your praises and kiss their ass or whatever that that's that's the the draw for their lands and the retro gaming and stuff really helps as well because it gives you another yeah. side track something where you can go off to the side and play a game against someone else mm, um, I mean, who necessarily you might not ordinarily want to kind of you know talk to or anything like that or play games yeah. with yeah, I started bringing I my, uh, my consoles and things like that to land and I'm, I'm trying to get some of my arcades uh, there as well it's just logistics of getting them there uh, it's not always easy um, and 
playing. I mean, like last LAN, I took a, a PlayStation One, just a PlayStation One, put it down, turned it on, no game in it, just the boot up sound, you know, boom, and everybody just turned around and just went, oh, PlayStation One, and just rushed <laughs> yeah, over to the, the games to go and play. Yeah, game. just rushed over to the uh, the projector, and it's like, oh, PlayStation One, sweet, played Crash Bash, things like that, and it just got every four player games, two player games, just getting people together and just just next to each other. They might not know each other, but the fact that they're playing a game. On the same screen, on the same console, because that's that's another thing as well. You've got the LAN gaming where you could be next to the person, you know, in 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 the LAN, you could the computer next to him, but you're still looking at a different screen. Whereas with a a console, it's split screen, or better yet, uh, like on the fighting games are like the the best ones for getting people going because it's on the same screen and it's fast action and. It's it's really it can be quite tense sometimes as well, and it's always always good for getting people shouting at each other and yeah. breaking the ice. And I think every game of worth a, every game of worth of salt thinks a good at uh, some stuff like um, Street Fighter Two, don't they? Everyone mm. thinks they're good at that. No, I know I'm, I'm terrible. Sure. At I, I don't think I'm, I'm, I am good. I I am <laughs> utterly terrible at that game. I'm, I've never been particularly great at fighter games. I got quite good at. Um, What's the one with a million hit combos? Uh, Killer Instinct. Killer Instinct, yeah. I got quite good at that, and there was another one with um, a boxer dude on the Amiga I played back in the day. Boxer. Um, he had red gloves, oh, that's all I remember. Uh, he was a black guy. Um, Final Fight? No, no, it was, it was an actual fighting game. Total... Mike Tyson? No, no, it was a, it was a, it was a Street Fighter-type game, you know. And he's just all alive! <laughs> <laughs> But I, I can't remember anyway. But yeah, I used to. I got quite good at some of them. But no, not these days. Um, I pl I've got. I bought Street Fighter Two from a SNES recently. Uh, I'd say in the last couple of months, and I played it, and I just got my ass handed to me by the CPU. Let alone anyone else who's actually played it and is decent at it. You know. Yeah, I mean, I've got uh, the majority of the games that I, I get um, because I go out um, to. You know, the charity shops and uh, car boots just to find any any old games. Cause not only do I collect them, I buy them for the events as well. Uh, mainly, I go for like I said, the fighter games, just because they're a good game to get people going. And Easy to pick up as well. Yeah, re well, usually um, <laughs> I got Guilty ah. Gear because. <laughs> Everybody says, oh, yeah, Guilty Gear, that's a good one. So I went and got it, tried to pick it up, and that's just like, I have no clue what's going on. It's just Japanese to the max, just things <laughs> flying everywhere. It's like, oh, God, what what is this? But, yeah, there's there's a lot of good games for the consoles. Just just for LAN parties, just to put on in a corner and just say, it's there. Use it whenever. Uh, that game was Body Blows, Chris. The black boxer with the big red gloves. Let me have a look. I used to have it for the Amiga as well. It was doing my head in there. Um, <laughs> so we mentioned uh, earlier on talking about lands as well. It's that whole um, aspect of being sat playing a game. They can be sat next to someone you'd never normally socialise with, and see again uh, a game that they're playing that you'd never seen before. And that'd get your interest. Now, I mean, I remember on quite a few of the BLRs, uh, part of the fun was just walking round to the room. Seeing what people were playing and seeing if there was anything you hadn't seen before, and then watching them for a bit to see whether there was something you could be interested in. And then them getting really arsy with you sometimes because you were looking yeah. at the screen. It's like, mate, yeah, we're at a LAN party, you're playing a game. Yeah. What am I going to do? <laughs> but you, you always get those people, though. Yeah. I've. But, you know, one, one thing I don't like about LAN parties. Now, I love LAN parties in general, but one thing I definitely don't like is that I can't take all of my hardware. Oh God! Yeah, not that Lou I want to. Is a Grinch about this. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't have three oh, screens. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I, I understand. That, no, you what don't do you need, need two screens. You... Nobody needs two screens. You just want. You to. don't need a PC. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, you you can turn up with your game here. <laughs> no, no, no. And we'll I, turn I, on PC. I first. just mean in life in general. You don't need these things, do you? You kind of do need them for a land. Oh though. yeah. No, I could come right, to a LAN and just what? Like Sam came to a LAN last uh, last weekend, and he didn't have a PC, and he perfectly he didn't play had a lot of fun. Games either. Yeah, he did. He, he did. He played on my PC, and he played on the Oculus, and I was going to give him my laptop, but I decided not to in the end. <laughs> Thought he might steal <laughs> stuff out of me. What would you bring to a LAN then, Chris? What would be your ideal LAN setup? Um, at least two monitors, 
at least two monitors, if not three, five. if not five. Um, <laughs> uh, to be fair, if 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 it wasn't a faff, I'd bring all my sound stuff as well. Bring your printer, your <laughs> your bass guitar. I've got a lot of um, I've got a lot of like sound hardware Those that I use for the streams. Those two hard drives on your desk. Yeah, oh, your shit. they're both broken. I've got a, a two hundred gig one which I've had forever, and then so I've bring got. Them. I've got a three gig one, a three terabyte one. Sorry, three gig hard drive. Three gig hard drive. No. I've, I've got a three gig hard drive. Uh, it started... My first hard drive was two point one. Two point one oh, gig. gig. I can beat that. Eighty. If you meg. want to do some streaming at LAN ops, you could bring all that stuff if you wanted. Uh, that's the thing. It. it oh. I said if it wasn't a faff to set it up, I'd bring it all. Oh but... yeah, God. <laughs> just. I mean, I usually. I. I. The reason I bring two monitors to a LAN is for monitoring servers and things like that and even just bringing two monitors I mean I've got a Line Lee uh, it's a V2000 which is a pretty big case so that's it's water cool as well so that's a bit of an arse tech in places but just yeah. I, I, <laughs> any more than two screens and I'm just like I can't be arsed what's, what's the point? I think two is excessive I mean it's fair enough if you're doing admin stuff and you, you need a machine to another monitor to kind of monitor games and stuff like that have command lines open and stuff like that config files and everything but for most, for people just playing games at land, you don't need two monitors. No, but you then again, need it. it's a want though because people yeah. want to sit there and put like VLC, some uh, or iPlayer or something on. That's I just, I just take it because I've got two monitors and I want to show them off. That's all. So, there's also that. No, there isn't. There's, isn't there's that. no, there's no street credit having fair, two monitors no, anymore, Chris. No, there isn't. No, there isn't. There is street credit <laughs> no having street, five though. There's no street credit having three monitors anymore, but five, yes. <laughs> Actually, two, <laughs> the two, the other two don't. Aren't, I hardly ever turn them on. Um, they they're not. In fact, what, I, I've, I don't know where they've gone. So I'll threw them out. Uh, I must have put she them back in the locker. She thought it was excessive as well, so she threw them in a bin. Uh, because because of the way that I had my hardware configured, it was lagging on the second on the other two monitors for some reason. The, the refresh rate was really low, but bugger it. Off topic. The most essential bit of kit that I think the Tito will land these is obviously the computer aside. Is my chair. A lot of people take their own chairs to lands now, and ha. if I'm Has honest, it's a good idea if you can fit it in your car. Because comfort at a land is a massive thing. If you're uncomfortable, you're going to be miserable. Yep. You're going to be an absolute. Because you're going to be bitch. you're going to be uncomfortable going to sleep <laughs> anyway. Generally, even if you've yeah. got a fucking awesome uh, airbed, you're still going to be uncomfortable at some point during the during your sleep. Bear in now. mind. You're in the sleeping room, and it's a sleeping room. You're sleeping with other people in the room, or you can sleep in the LAN hall if if you can sleep in discos. But <laughs> it's you, you've really, really got to like make yourself feel. It. I mean, I know you're coming away from the whole home environment to go play games in with your mates, but you have got to make yourself feel at home as much as possible, just because. Oh, definitely. You, you you'll just make you feel. It, it'll affect it'll affect your game. Um, so you won't play as well and you'll just be miserable because you won't be as comfortable I mean I'm alright usually sitting on the chairs that are there as long as I've got some sort of padding I mean uh, it, at the Lamont's venue we've got sofas there as well so I usually nick one at sofas but a lot of people do end up bringing their own chairs just because yeah. they the need those, that extra yeah. support it's one of those things where uh, Lan, you, you can pretty much expect you to be sat in front of your screen for 16, oh, yeah. 18 hours a day. Yeah. If you weren't comfortable, you weren't going to be having a good time. Yeah. You'd be probably going to be sleeping in that chair at some point as well. So yeah. yeah. And you'd probably be naked. The chairs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, I. That's I'd always good. When you wake up, that. You, you come, you come up in the morning, and someone is sleeping on your chair and all of your your neighbours' chairs. Yeah. Is across anything, right? Do I tip them off it? Do I pour something on them? Yes and yes. <laughs> Both. You don't sleep on other people's shit. You don't sleep on other people's shit. I don't care who you are. Get off my shit, you stinky, smelly, geeky bastard. <laughs> no, I do think there are some there are some unwritten rules for the lands. And that that is one of them. You don't use other people's shit. I mean, yeah. I'm, unless I'm they offer it to you. Like, uh, if 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 you like off get offered, you know, yeah, fair enough. But I've had people like use my pillows. And it's like the what? Yeah, no, you, no, the, no, no. you just no. Don't use my pillow. <laughs> you, I don't know what you've got in that head. Sleep on go, your pillow. Go use away. your toothbrush. Oh, <laughs> yeah. face with your flannel. You're all right. Oh. Toothbrush. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just 
that that's another thing as well, like the boundaries at lands. Mm. Some people have them and some people respect them really well, but there are people who don't. Yeah. Mm. Um, Again, it's the social awkwardness, though, isn't it? A lot of the time, yeah. and it's not, yeah. you know, it's just how it is. But you you learn to accept it. I I remember. Um, I I I just thought of my worst experience ever at a land party, but not my best. I can't think of my best still. I st I can't. I'm not coming up with anything for my best. Is that, I've had so many good experiences. That's my excuse. Um, that um that duel we had in Quake Two on um on the figure of eight map. Do you remember the one? It was a it was a it was a tawny final, and you won it by one, one. point. And it was that like was, within a second. A good, that was one of my favourite points. That was I that had. a LAN? Though? That was a that oh, was BLR. I think that's my favourite favourite one. There decided on then. Um, that that to be fair, that had popped in my head, but I didn't think that was a LAN. I thought that was online. No, that was at a LAN. So if that's that, on that, a LAN, that, then that, that was that a ta that was during a quick two tawny, and it was us two in the final. Fucking! And I remember was, people. It was the final match, and it was so close. I remember, yeah. I you got did. it in overtime. Yeah, I got it in overtime, and I remember people commenting on the um, the stuff that was being streamed on the uh, on the video screen and commenting about our skins, saying that we were both cheating bastards. I've got a recording of it, and if anyone's interested, I'll record it and put it on YouTube. Yeah, I've got, I've, I've got a demo of it. I've got it somewhere. I'm sure I have. I'm gonna. Oh, that was one thing I said about this slam party. I'm gonna have to practice with my old config in Quake, just yeah, so next time I can. You like. I can actually give him a challenge because I don't. I, I'm. I'm still not having it. I, you know what I'm like. I'm not usually. <laughs> I don't usually care about winning or losing. I'm not. I'm not particularly competitive. But that <coughs> was that was atrocious on my part. I should have done better than that. I Quake really should have. Quake skill directly <laughs> equates the length of penis with us two. Uh, okay. If you, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> v penis. Anyway, uh, yeah. what was your favourite moment you were saying there, Thorin? Um, Thorno. The Stop calling him lands. Thorin. Thorno. Be quiet, Chris. <laughs> 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 it was at the Epic Lands uh, a few years ago um, when I was playing Quake 3 a lot. And they, they play Quake 3 there. So I jumped on the server and I jumped into the server about. I think it was five or ten minutes late. It was a twenty-five minute um, game, um, a twenty-minute game, twenty-five minute frag limit, a twenty-five frag limit. Um, in a game of about twenty people, um, I ended up blitzing everybody coming first. And I was like, "Oh yeah, good, good feelings." And this is oh player, change your name. I was like, "Oh shit, need to change my name." Oh, don't worry, guys. I'll just load my config. Next thing I hear, he's gonna load his config. Oh fuck! <laughs> so load my config in. And that's it. I've got all my um, all my scripts and everything loaded. All my um, all my bindings, and then just wreck people. And I win a game of twenty five frags in three minutes. And I was just, nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just then, just have people just coming round, and it's that feeling of that's another thing about lands as well. Having people come up and watch you play games and go good shot ooh, and things like that like mm. really comment on your gaming it's a fantastic feeling and i had that and people coming around and watching me play games like the fight found me on seating plan were asking you know where's thorno came over and just watching me play quake and watching me destroy these guys and it's a really satisfying feeling and yeah, yeah of course it is. everyone wants it's great you know some kind of recognition and uh yeah as a gamer that's the ultimate recognition other gamers being having some respect for you because you yeah. don't get loads of respect in some gaming communities not you know some some are great but generally yeah you, you, the, i think gamers can be quite mm, what's the word uh they can put, losers. yeah put you can put you down bad sportsman <laughs> there you go that's a better yeah, way of putting bad it sportsman. I think. yeah definitely um it's yeah that is i mean playing in a game with the community thing like we played as 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 the LANOPS community on, on online games for ages, like years and years and years under the LNO tag. And we played a lot of Call of Duty and we used to get called all sorts under the sun just because we were going to play a game on a team deathmatch on Call of Duty. And because we knew the maps, we knew the game, we knew the mechanics of the game and we we communicated with each other. We wrecked um public games absolutely destroyed them always coming top and just it's instantly as soon as they think it, that you're a hacker that's it they'll still call you a hacker start shouting hacker and just it's just because they're losing 
And yeah. they, can't, they can't take the fact that they are Publi losing. Public service is a very different thing, though, aren't they, at the end of the day? You can't really... Yeah, 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 you, you, It's like comments on the internet. That's basically where they started, from what I can think. You know, it's game people on gaming public gaming servers just sit and troll everyone constantly. Not everyone, but you know what I mean. It's become a whole kind of game in itself, hasn't it? Just to piss people off online now. Or in games. Just, I think that's probably an awful troll. That's why I've developed this thick skin that I don't really have that competitive streak in me because of all that, because that kind of ruined it for me, I think, a bit. I mean, if you look at um, competitive gaming on PC and then competitive gaming on consoles, it's the, 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 it's a completely different. I mean, there there is there's a few videos out there um, of the competitive gamers. It's more so in the uh, the Call of Duty um, leagues, um, just probably because it, it, it's. I don't know, they all seem like angsty teenagers, like 16, 17, 18 year olds, and they're in uh, in the arena, on the stage, in front of players, you know, and being streamed, they are, they're they playing the, the final game of this big tournament, and they're there shouting your mama jokes, like swearing, like top of the uh, voices, and really being quite vile towards each other. I've had that you, before. You won't, you won't get that in PC gaming. Or not not as on you know that what? scale. I, I, League of Legends. I, I disagree because I've been at a few lands where there's been groups of, like, again, friends like us that are in their own little clique, but mm. when they start playing competitive games and they've had a few drinks in them, they turn into arseholes. Yeah. The, the, at a professional level, though. Uh, okay, well, they, that wasn't professional. That was just yeah. playing competitions at a LAN party, but... Oh, I've, yeah, I mean, people do get that. I mean, um, again, we've got some very loudmouth people at uh, um, uh, LAN Ops, and they'll just... I, I do it. I'll, I'll get into a game and then just start shouting. It won't, I, I won't particularly start shouting, oh, you're an absolute dickhead for killing me, and things like that. It'll be, it'll be stuff like, oh, go on, get in there. But there are people who start shouting, you know, oh, what was that? That was bullshit. Blah, 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 and start crying, you know, hacker, and... Just, just being a bad sportsman about it. I don't see it as much at the lands I've been to, uh, but I do know of it happening at some of the the bigger, more competitive I lands. I remember at one of the BLRs specifically, there was a group of lads that were really quite rowdy, and it was it was a bit off-putting. I felt I didn't feel as safe as I had done, and I think it kind of mm. it started going downhill when them that kind of people started to come to it. They and were again, good players as well. They were kind of aspiring professionals as well, weren't they? Yeah, I think so. Again, this is what I said last week when the when the people who were chasing the fame or chasing the sponsorship or the money or the there's an ulterior motive to just having fun playing games with your mates. Then that's mm -hmm. when it started. That's when I took a step back and I thought, I'm not, I'm not going to do anything competitive or, you know, really play games on public servers anymore. And yeah, the only place I can play games really is with me close mates. So even then, it has to be co-op games. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Now, has have any of you guys thought about? My question then. Uh, in fact, yeah. Sorry, you've already answered it. I haven't. Th Th Thorno and I thought you Thorno had just has, answered yeah. it. Well, no, I, I said one of them. I was giving you an example of one of the ones that I thought you might thought was a good one. I'm going to use that as mine because I can't really think of any others. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but I will explain it in a bit more detail <clears throat> later on. Yeah, well, mine was basically one of the social parts of a land. It was going to the breakout area at one of the BLRs. All of the kind of SQS guys sat around in the uh, the side room just having a laugh to the point where I had to run from the room because I couldn't breathe from laughing. Like, I couldn't take a breath. I was just exhaling everything out while running through the room. And I just, uh, I've never laughed so hard as I've done at some of the lands. And, you know, the, you can't top a memory like that. It's not really about the game in that, in that respect. Although there's been some really great moments in the gaming as well. But just to be around your mates and to have a great laugh to the point where it actually hurts to laugh, that's, you know, that, that's, that's what does it for me. And that's what's it, always done it for me. Yeah, for me, it's been around my best mates doing my, f you know, my favourite hobby, favourite pastime, which is playing games. I mean, like, having said, you, you're just saying, you're laughing so much that it hurts. I'll always remember this uh, at the Frag Factory in Barnsley, which is uh, my local land. Um, we were playing um, 
multi theft auto you know the, hmm. the san andreas uh, mod i've had some good and, times in that as well oh my god we, we we had no no mods it was literally just the stock mod no plugins or anything like that because i couldn't figure out for the life of me how to get it working because i was just wrecked and we just i all, all i remember were there were one guy in uh, skates just running round and we we just thought oh we'll just we'll just play like a a game of tag or something this guy's in this vehicle we've all got to go kill him so i'm I, you see the blip on the radar and it's running across uh this uh, street and it's like right i'm gonna intercept him but he goes uh, ahead of me first so i'm going down this intersection and i see him go across the intersection so there was a guy in a bike that was a guy we try to get then there's the hot dog van then there's this guy in skates just going past and then there's just a the mass pile up of other people just trying to you know clamber into them and it's just it looks so comical and funny it's just absolutely fantastic and it's those moments i think that that, that make, make yeah, it those kind of moments i think that they they're also some of my favorite when we're, we're, we're playing a game and something unexpected happens in the game it's it's a little bit outside of the normal parameters of what happens i'm not saying it's a bug or anything you know like Say, for example, me and Lou both run towards each other in a duel and we both fire a rocket at the same time and then end up dying at the, exactly the same time and there's just screams everywhere and quake or whatever. That kind of thing, even though it's it can happen any time, it's still... It, everyone laughs around you and everyone who's watching is he gets involved yeah i suppose it's, it's, it's often usually when like i said before it's often usually when you start try something new that no one's very good at and everyone can just enjoy it like i remember when greg first played counter-strike and it was like one of the first times he played counter-strike at the lan and everyone back then took ages to buy the weapons you'd, you'd press the b and then we'd look through the weapons and what weapon do i want i think i'll have one of them meanwhile greg didn't even know how to buy weapons he just ran to the other enemy team and stabbed them all <laughs> and there's all he just heard was people in the room go what the fuck was that and they'd all been sat in the buy menu and greg had just ran up and just shanked them it's like you know what i like as well i like seeing reactions from people like say for yeah. example we've talked about this previously <clears throat> we talked about this weekend actually the um whenever i get a chain gun out or anyone gets a chain gun out in quake 2 and chases lou around he starts to squeal a little bit because he, <laughs> he hates it he absolutely hates it but it's lovely to see that reaction it's like it's not like the same as it is online it's like oh i'm gonna get the kill but it's actually much better because she's sat there going <laughs> etc it's that thing of be, being in the same room and seeing the reaction on the face when when you get them. It, it's just, it's great. And also, afterwards, all being able to congregate and reminisce about that game you just had and just be like, oh, how great was that? Or uh, it, that it, it's it's what makes lands and it, it, that's that's the community side of it. Yeah, that's, it was, that's 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 the, the great... whole kind of uh, like camaraderie of it. People make lands, not games. Yeah. They do, yeah. I also. That there one night, um, it was when they were having the BLRs at the uh, the Highfield Hotel. Mm -hmm. um, we were there was only a few of us left up because it was the second night and we'd all kind of went for the best part of thirty six hours without sleep. And someone had the bright idea to start playing Eric Eleven. Yeah, that will have been me probably. Probably yeah. <laughs> and it's just I've never known so much randomness within half an hour in my life. Plus, I mean the the sleep deprivation definitely added to it. But the I do remember that howling from people just the sight you were seeing. There's people falling off chairs. Yeah. <laughs> just the whole thing just turned into a circus for like thirty minutes. And then I, th I think we all went to sit down because it was getting too much visual stimulation <laughs> from CLYP as well with all yeah. that red stuff yeah. on the. Oh God. <laughs> These are old Quake 2 maps, by the way, that These we... Terrible maps as well. We used to go to a website called... Uh, an offshoot of something awful called Cranky Steve's Haunted Whorehouse, which is full of really terrible Quake maps. And we download them and try and play them. It's like this old like contemporary sky. .com. <laughs> oh, it was terrible. There was one called um, This Map is Good Fun. <laughs> Spelled uh, wrong. <laughs> Spelled God, wrong. God this fun. Map is God fun, yeah. <laughs> It was, um, you'd, you'd press a button and a massive cube of lava would come <laughs> just play a map and kill everyone. <laughs> and then you'd go into a room and there'd be some music playing and then suddenly the whole room would change and squish you or something. It, yeah, you think everything was lava, but you couldn't see the lava as well. It was just you were floating around in nothing, but you were going, ah, ah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> you can only have so much fun in that kind of thing because it just gets frustrating though and you have to be in the right mood for them, that's the thing. Yeah. Normally sleep deprived. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And full of, uh, full of caffeine and sugar. Sleep deprivation does make for some good memories. We're getting really, really crap with it, though, aren't we? 
We're all yeah, getting a little I, I bit crap. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't. I was absolutely shanked on Saturday night. <laughs> Did you go? Oh, yeah, you went to sleep behind me, didn't you? you yeah, just... I just fell asleep on the side. I just literally could not keep my eyes open any longer. Oh, yeah. Uh... That's because I only had two hours sleep the previous night because after we finished playing Terraria, uh, I decided that I had a bit of a long time. Uh, oh, so, do we want to know? Uh, no, not I'm what you're thinking. I love to cross not. my mind. <laughs> 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 have you checked your curtains recently? Like? Oh. <laughs> no, I, um, I, I decided to have a, <laughs> a little bit of a game on the new Civilization, which had came out on that Friday. Mm, um, I do want to play that. I do want to play that. It is really good. It takes a while to get into it. Uh, a lot of the interfaces are different. But I think I started playing that about... What time did you go to bed, Chris? Half three? Something like that, yeah. I think I next looked at the clock at about six o'clock. I was going to say, you, you, said, six. you said to me, um, all right, I'm going to play this for half an hour, and then I'm going to go to bed. And I went, no, you won't, mate. You'll be up on it all night. And yeah. you obviously were. <laughs> <laughs> I, you don't I think play I finally got in my sleeping bag. Hour by about, uh, it was just after six and then Lou comes booling downstairs with a spring in his step and out by state banging the kettle on and making all the noise in the world <laughs> I hated you I despised you you could see it on his point. face as well, when I came downstairs <laughs> like, everyone was up talking having a little bit of a gab, I came downstairs after everyone else, said hello they all went, alright Chris, looked at Steve and he was just looking at Lou as if he was going to murder him, <laughs> he was just going to strangle him <laughs> it's like, Sorry, oh, yeah, you had an early night, so you could just wake me up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, but I, I used to be able to last a lot longer than that without any sleep. Yeah, I, I, I stayed awake. The longest I stayed awake was 50 hours. I know that Brannon stayed awake 60 hours at a LAN as well. I've done but basically full you had to do that because you had to maximise the amount of time that you had yeah. with the fast connection and the file sharing and playing games with zero ping, you had to make the most of that weekend. You remember that Whereas vision, though? You, you were paying for it as well. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You walk, you, walk into, you walk into the LAN room where everyone's playing or gaming, and it's it's midnight or it's 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. You walk in, there's a few screens flashing in the background. There's a few people laid on the, on the, on the keyboards with a keyboard imprint on the face. There's people, there's feet sticking out of everywhere. And there, there are people like wrapped around the PCs so people wouldn't nick them. And <laughs> <laughs> not that that happened at any of our lands, but you know, yeah. <laughs> it's still a potential. We did have a man running with an AK 47 at one point in a Balaclava run, and I shit myself. Do you that remember that? Before, I feel like we've turned up thing. to lands in as full airsoft gear before. Yeah, but um, this was completely yeah. unexpected. I thought someone had actually broken into the building and tried to steal all the computers. Doesn't for ring a brief any bells. Yeah, one of the, one of the oh, admins yeah, came running this, in. This would be a lot of. How long ago was this, actually? This, this will have been 2004, 2003. So, yeah, LAN parties weren't really mainstream, so, yeah, I would have shit myself, to be honest. Yeah, but... but we was... did used to have a hell of a lot of people at all of the old LAN parties um, who'd come into the room, be, like, talking to one of the staff members at the door and be kind of looking over and seeing what we were doing and trying to check us out. We'd, we actually had a few people come into the room and, and walk around and talk to us. And I had one person sit down at someone's PC once, and I, as the admin, I had to get, sit down with him and say, well, say to him, mate, that's, sorry, that's someone's PC, you're going to have to leave the room. Yeah, he probably thought <laughs> he could come in and start using them, like a job centre or something. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't, yeah. That, these people, they were, they, they were out usually, we were at hotels or whatever, so they're out pissed. They come in and they think that it's just free to walk in and do what you want with anything, you know? We've had problems like that at LAN Ops, like... Uh, one of the ones you guys came to, actually, we, these... Uh, it was at the drum field and it's, uh, it's like a little shopping alcove bit and there's this uh, massive car park outside this with the venue and these little undesirables came a little over and they were just like, Oh, mate, look at you all, you nerds inside to that little... Uh, what was it? That little venue, that little room, playing on the computers at three o'clock in the morning, and one of the guys yep. inside just replied to him, just like, "What about you in a car park on your bike at three o'clock in the morning?" <laughs> <laughs> and then, rah, 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 and then, yeah. Don't antagonise so, them though, because they'll probably just cause trouble. That's the thing. Yeah, they ended up throwing something through the window. Nice, um, nice. But it. There's always something like that. There's always you need crowd control stuff. It's people not understanding things, isn't it? I bet they've got yeah. bouncers at um at the big lands. The security. Yeah, they've got there, security. There's um I think Epic Land. Epic Land. You have to show your band when you walk through the door. Uh, if you don't, they're not supposed to let you in. But it, they don't really seem to. 
I mean, they don't let anybody come in, obviously, but you don't really, they never really had a problem with it, so there's, they, there's no bouncers as such. But I think uh, at iSeries, they actually have proper stewards and things, so, uh, you know, crowd control. Uh, Gravity ever... Land, they, they do actually have bouncers, but they're uh, part of the plug in Sheffield, so that's, that's a nightclub, so they actually get uh, crowd control. The the, the, uh, the gamer in me, when you mentioned that you had to show your uh, your armband, otherwise something would happen, immediately thought you'd walk too far and guns would start shooting at you. <laughs> like automated sentries would just take you down in the doorway. That's what should happen. <clears throat> like in like 1000, like in Robocop or whatever. You have 30 seconds to comply. <laughs> Chair. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I can't think of it. Again, I've, I remember lots of moments from LAN parties, but most of them are not really um, repeatable, unfortunately. There's also a lot of um, kind what of... In when, you put your, when, you put, when you put your monkey thing on the uh, fan? Do you remember that you had a monkey which went, eh, 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 I'm a monkey! Eric, that's Eric, Eric. he's up there. He's up, we put him on the fan and there turned the fan on and he goes flying around the, the ceiling. And we found out he had an egg inside him. <laughs> Show us the egg. The egg, yeah. He's got an egg inside him, it's a monkey egg. Oh, he's Do we spend work more out. time playing with this bloody monkey than we did playing Quake? At it's some a lines. monkey egg? What's a monkey egg? I don't know, it's, it's got an egg inside it. Uh. <laughs> there, there we go, go look. <laughs> it's a monkey egg. It's like it's <laughs> over, is or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's his parachute egg. <laughs> monkey over it. I think I just got it from my girlfriend at the time from uh, for a birthday or something. Because that's the kind of presents we used to get each other. That's one thing you used to get as well. You used to get a lot of people taking mascots to lands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet you still get that, though. You actually get girls now who go for the gaming rather than just girls who go along with the boyfriend. The boyfriends are yeah. just oh. to see if you can get a quick shag. Speak, speak of, uh, <laughs> speaking of girls t <laughs> going to land parties. Why would you go to a party for a quick shag? It's like the most, like... <laughs> Uh, well. Not not a good idea to take your girlfriend if she's not into games to a LAN. Um, I did that. I did that at one of the BLRs, and uh, it was she wanted to come. I said to her, "It's going to be. I'm spending a weekend with my friends playing computer games. You don't like computer games. You can come if you want. I'll bring you. I'll get you a hotel room. But just bear in mind that I'm going to be playing games with my friends." And she came. And she was really good, you know, she kind of sat, sat down and joined in and got, got involved with everybody. And then she went to bed early, as if she was in a mood. And I was like, oh, God, what am I, what, I'm, so I went up, you know, to see if she was all right. And I stayed up in the room for an hour or two. And she got worse and worse and worse and got in really, really, really bad mood. It turns out that she wanted me to be downstairs so she could set the room up for kind of a surprise thing she wanted to do. And I'm not telling you what anything else, but that's basically what she wanted to do. And and she was getting in more and more of a of a mood with me because I wasn't playing games downstairs. <laughs> it's like, oh god, I can't win. What's going wrong? But yeah, it was uh, that was my worst moment at a LAN party. It was a, a particularly harrowing time <laughs> in my life. I've had pl plenty of worst moments, usually involving alcohol. So I don't think I've ever been like properly drunk at a LAN though. The it's... first TFF I ever went to um, was my 18th, and oh that's when they, that's when they had the beer bong. Uh, it's mm. banned now, is the beer bong because it got messy, and yeah, I just I got wrecked, and then I went for my birthday meal next day for a tapenyaki sushi. Oh, hungover, <laughs> not fun. No, that's the worst thing you can have when you're hungover, mate. Jesus oh yeah, Christ. yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Oh. Uh, uh, don't call it sushi though, because Sam, because uh, Lou will tell you off. Sushi's fine as long as you're not calling sushi raw fish or raw fish sushi. Right, come on, guys. Right, we right. Ah, oh, here we go. I'm, no, I'm uh, off topic, entirely off topic. But it's something that I had a bit of a, a go at Lou for. I mean, uber pedantic. I called something. We were talking about. Um, I someone said I don't eat raw food, and I said, well, the only raw food that I eat is sushi. Right? I know perfectly well that sushi fish is called sashimi, but Lou was insisting that I should have called it sashimi at that time. If I had said sashimi, half the room wouldn't have understood what I was talking about anyway. Did half and two, the room? It's There's only four people in the room. So what's two. the difference between sashimi and sushi, though? Sashimi, sashimi is, is the fish. Sashimi is the raw fish. So sushi is the name of the, the, the whole... Seaweed food, specifically the, the rice. Like um, the way that they prepare the rice. It's, so a way that, it's a way that the food is prepared, not just the rice. 
Okay. It's yeah, called sushi it's... rice, but it's still sushi food. Yeah. You were still right then, kind of. He was, yeah, but he wasn't specific enough for me, and I'm I'm a pedantic twat. I said, right, if I, <laughs> oh, I, um, the only raw food that I eat is sashimi. What sashimi? Can't be asked to explain. You What's didn't sashimi? need to explain. It's you were sushi. in, a, yeah, you you were in a room full of people who knew what sashimi was. Um, you should have had more confidence in your friend's ability to pass what you were saying. I'll make sure from now on I'll be exactly right with with Damn every right. every product and you every. Could said, you could have said smoked salmon as well. So sort off. Smoked salmon's not officially raw, though, is it? It is raw, yeah. Well, it's smoked. It's smoked. Which so therefore, cooked. it's slightly cooked. No, it's not cooked. It's smoked. But anyway, let's, let's move on. This is about Lance. This is about fish. Lance, Lance's webcam is... <laughs> a cooking show now. Lance's webcam. <laughs> Lou's webcam has just turned into this blur as he's going... Okay, we do... Right, anyway. Has anybody else got anything to talk about um, with Lance? Is there anything that needs to be said that we haven't said? Um, uh, we haven't, we haven't really awesome. covered, yeah, we haven't really covered the kind of like local playing. I mean, we co covered lands, but there's, there's kind of there's, there's been a period in the last ten, fifteen years where local gaming has become basically non-existent. You don't tend to play many games on the same screen, and there's been some recent games like um, Nidhog, which are excellent local games that you can only play locally. And uh, they're starting to see a resurgence now, but Terraria. it's... Terraria! Yeah, I'm, well, Terraria is... When you say locally, you just mean local On the same network, machine. Network, not, uh, not the same. Uh, local gamers in all on the same computer. There's same only screen. one. There's in, like, split screen. Yeah. There's only yeah. one that comes to, to mind immediately, apart from Nidhogg, which you just mentioned, um, and that's... Uh, isn't in my mind. Forgotten it already. Castle Crashes is the one I'm thinking of. Um, yeah, it's Towerfall Ascension. Towerfall oh, Ascension, that's yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think isn't Towerfall Ascension Castle Crashes? Might be. It may be. I don't know. I think it's the same style of game. It's like the the, the um, original Mario Brothers sort of thing, isn't it? Smash Brothers sort of. So I know the guys at the uh, Castle Crashes have done something new. I think it's like Tower something. Ta Towerfall Ascension's fairly old now. Well, yeah. Castle well, Crashes. Thinking of something else. Then. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. But the but the point is, I mean, they they, they encapsulate everything. That you do at a LAN, really. I mean, you're sat in the same room, you're able to talk and play with your friends. It's just on a smaller scale. This is exactly why I spend most of the LANs when the arcade emulator's there playing on the arcade emulator. Because mm. I can play on my PC whenever I want, I can play on my PC with my mates whenever I want, but I can't sit and play, you know, with two people with two joysticks and play a game together. Which is, which is why I bring the consoles and the, the emulators and stuff like that. I mean, like I, I said, I, I want to bring my arcades down because I've got a Tekken cabinet with Tekken 1, 2, 3 and Tag and I've got a couple of House of Dead cabinets but only one's fully working. But I want to bring those down because it would just be like amazing just to actually be there and actually on a prop House of Dead cabinet. But I always feel weird though when I'm when someone, someone else's console is there. I mean, I think you had it at uh, LAN Ops actually. I uh, I saw someone playing Guitar Hero, I think. Yeah. I think it was at yours. And I really wanted to play it because I was really enjoying it at home at the time. But I felt like I was touching other people's stuff. Yeah, that's... that. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it so that you, you... If it's just there and it's not plugged in and it's just you've got to, you've got to plug it in yourself and plug in all this, everything, the, the won't tend to use it. It's got to be there, ready to go, and you've got to say, uh, specifically <laughs> say, you can use it, go ahead use it and then they'll go use it yeah but like That's you said a lot of people have uh, having a track mode built on them come, yeah because come play me because the ir kids you know they're there for people to play so that's 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 where they have that uh attraction and but i can yeah, see right, that, be, I can see that being huge um app lands now with, with the you know the rise of emulators and stuff um good controllers yeah, I think that'd be a brilliant thing for a LAN, even if you with the coin operated, you know, yeah, to make a bit of extra I'm funds. To, uh, to try and jump on it now. Uh, Ten pences, just imagine that. I, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking more at like uh, fifty pence or uh, two. Uh, ah, ah. I can no. get a mobile game for fifty pence. No, ah, I can run all <laughs> the games that's on your emulator on my PC. Why would I do yeah. that? What's where's where's you don't have the a controller? I could get <laughs> one. <laughs> if because I really the, wanted to, the, 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 the incentive is that it's the proper arcade. It's the you know 
original controls, the proper um, the proper screen and everything. I mean, 50p, I mean, I don't want to go any higher than 50p. I don't like games that are like quid. Like when you go to wherever and you see games at like two quid, you're like, oh, Jesus Christ. But if it's like a, a House of the Dead or something, I've, I feel I've got to put, you know, I've got, I've got to drop two quid in because I love playing House of the Dead. Um, but a lot of people have been asking for um, not so much the newer stuff, but like the older stuff. 1942, that's a, a big one. Hmm. No, Donkey Kong, although getting a classic, an original Donkey Kong cabinet is all right. If you've put effort expensive. into buying the cabinet, then yes, okay. Pay, pay for it. I thought you were talking about like a, a MAME cabinet or something. No, I mean like actually getting the proper original stuff. Oh, I mean, I take that get, back then. Get, getting an emulator is great um, and it's a good starting point, but you've got the legality stuff with actually owning the, the ROM. Yeah. And then um, you've got the. the it, it's, it's a, there is a difference between playing it on an emulator and playing on a. A, an authentic machine. There, there is a difference. Sound, video, even just, just it, just the cabinet being there in front of you. It, it I, yeah, imagine difference. if you had like a, a four-player Turtles arcade cabinet. There, I would everyone love, would be all over love it. Love to get a four-player Turtles or Simpsons yeah. cabinet, uh, but they're they're up there with like some of the most expensive cabinets. I imagine, yeah. Yeah. I'd love an it's, R-type cab. Uh, R-types are quite hard to get. I've got a Gallagher uh, cab. Uh, in my garage, um, I've got the board. I just need to uh, refurb the entire thing. But uh, missile command as well. I'd love to get oh, one of those. Oh, the trackball on it. Command. Yeah, yeah, yeah the trap. Brilliant. Um, it's that. That's the thing, though. Like you're going, oh great, that game. Yeah, that's the attraction to it. Like yeah. the nostalgia and things like that. <laughs> but even gone. If you had an afterburner with the hydraulics built in, I'd pay for oh. that. The, the big, the big hydraulics. With the R360 ones. cab. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I agree that. I mean, I recently went to a, a, an expo in Blackpool that was, a, 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 what's it called, retro? The pinball one was it? No, it wasn't pinball. It was it was all old retro games on cabinets, and they had hundreds of them, all all free as well. You paid to get in. You paid twenty quid or whatever it was, yeah. and then everything, all of the games are free. And then there was loads of indie stalls and loads of triple A stalls and. Um, Retro Expo, oh god, it was in Black Play, Play Expo, that's it. Uh, I think they do all over oh, the country. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's really, it was really cool. But I still felt weird about going on the emulators, even, uh, on the cabinets, even though they were all free, and I knew that I could go on them, and I paid to go in there. I'm weird with other people's stuff. I think it's just, you, I think it's just me, yeah. Yeah. Because there was plenty of people playing on things. Very strange. Ozzy, Ozzy went to a retro revival in Birmingham at the NEC, I think it was, and that's where he met uh, John Romero and got his picture took him with him, taken with him, which is a life, basically a, a kind of a life-defining moment. Yeah, that's what me meeting John Romero. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, even it, your picture, taken, your picture with him. taken with him. I'd so I'd sooner get my picture taken with John Carmack than Romero, but yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah but... Mark, are you? <laughs> Getting all picky and all that with the extra yeah, development. Well, no, come on. Carmack is the guy for coding game engines. Uh, uh, Lou's got an opinion on this that I he do, expressed this weekend. That, yeah. Yeah, he's Go not on, a tell, Carmack, tell, tell Carmack what he, what he <laughs> says about himself. Well, yeah. John, Carmack, John Carmack's not a very good programmer. It's because he's not a very good programmer that we've got such great games from him. Because the bugs that have crept through, the emergent gameplay from those bugs are the reasons that have made stuff like Doom with its wall strafe and, and Quake with its bunny hopping and rocket jumping so popular. Because they've got emergent gameplay as a result of poor programming. Yeah, but enough. anyway, he's probably got a lot better now. I, I, I mean, he did he's a lot of stuff. He's probably got a lot killers. better now. <laughs> yeah. Look at Lou. Look, he's, honestly, he's even, get, he's even getting <laughs> elitist with with like AAA programmers it's like no no you, is, you're not like a lot good, of people a lot of, a lot of people hail Carmack as a, a programming god and there are a lot better programmers who had very little exposure the the fact is when he's when you watch he's had a lot of exposure though yeah yeah but but he's not he's not the programming god that everyone makes him out to be but then again, he made most... some absolutely brilliant games and he, he, the, the the best thing about it is the fact that he didn't remove the the things that made the games good because they were seen to be they weren't seen to be faults, they were seen to be just like, emergent features, you know, um, and that's a great thing, because many um, programmers who would kind of be very hoity-toity about it would probably patch those things, because 
it's almost them. It's it, those bugs are displaying their flaws. You, I think you might be overestimating the amount of um, control that programmers have in this day and age when it comes to AAA stuff. Back then, it was new. I bet Carmack had a lot more control than any lead programmers have these oh, days. Yeah. Because the, the corp, the, the, it's designed by committee most of the time, isn't it? Most of the most of the AAA games. Well, the id games were done by two programmers, I think. Two yeah, exactly. Programmers maximum. Less people in the pot, the better, really. This is why indie programming is uh, indie game de- game development's taking off big time at the moment because it's one person's vision at the end of the day, and they're uh, you know they're getting to do what they want to do and what they even if there are bugs in it, it's yeah. their baby. They'll fix it. But to, to you know, the point is, yes, I would prefer to get a picture with John Carmack. I do like John Carmack <laughs> a lot more. But John Romero is a good second place. <laughs> if you had your picture place. taken with John Carmack, would you actually tell him how crappy he is? Um, <laughs> I'll just be like, what did you do with that? He's a lot richer than me. He's a, <laughs> he's a lot richer than me, and he can he can make rockets. Um, he's a rocket scientist, basically. That's really interesting, <laughs> that isn't it? How how gamers in general tend to think that their opinion is more valid than the that of no, the developer. Oh, no, no, it's not just you. The, the internet's full of you. That's the thing. <laughs> full of you. The, internet, the internet's full of people going, oh, it can't be hard, that hard to just add X feature in. I tell you what, I'm writing a game at the moment. <laughs> it fucking is hard. It is hard work. It's not, And I'm not just talking about the, the programming, the fidelity and the assets and the amount of effort that needs to go into the art side. That's where all the work is these days. The programming is pretty easy in comparison, usually. <laughs> Still exceptions to that, of course. Anyway, getting a bit off topic again. Right, um, I, do anyone else want to say anything? Because I, I might wrap the show up if, uh, if you guys are finished. I think we covered everything in the document. I don't, I don't know if there's anything more. Um, it'd, be, it'd be nice for Thorno to. Yeah. Oh, go on, sorry, stay. I was, I was going to say, it'd be I, nice I, for Thorno to pimp the next LAN. I, I was going to let him do that. I wasn't just going to shut the show down. There's, there's plenty right. of time left, Lou. I'm just making sure that you're going to shut up for the rest of the, uh, the re- rest of the show. <gasps> that doesn't happen very often, everybody. Savor this moment. Screenshot. <clears throat> Yes, so um, thank you very much everybody for watching. Uh, as Steve says and summed it up quite nicely, lands are awesome. If you haven't been to a land party and you're into gaming and being social in any way, shape or form, and you want to speak to people who are of the same kind of persuasion as you, don't go to Thornos LAN because Thornos LAN is full of trendies by the sounds of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. No, um, find a local <laughs> land party to you or, or a not so local land party because we travel... I did 250 miles to to go to Lewes and back this weekend, and you know I've been to Lincoln before for the, the Thorn uh, for Thornos Lands and um, plenty of plenty of other places to do. Not Lincoln. Was it Lincoln? Sheffield. No, I've Sheffield. been to Lincoln. That was one of Ben's lands, wasn't it? Yeah, that was Lansop. Lands Sorry, Sheffield, Lincoln, all over the place. Anyway, but if you if you enjoy it, get on it because it is a brilliant experience. Even even today when it's not as good as it used to be, as we would always say, because. What? Or even hire some tables and chairs and just get some of your mates around your house. Yes, yeah. like we again, do, that's great fun as well. Sometimes, again, it it may it depends on the technical abilities of the people involved, but usually, I imagine, if people are playing games on PCs, they've got a little bit of knowledge and they'll be able to get a... I mean, you can buy a five-port hub for 40, 50 quid and plug well, into that. that's got broadband yeah. should have at least a four-port hub. Yeah, yeah, there's you that. Don't, you don't need... like I mean, we, we run a lot of really expensive gear and... Uh, Chris as network guys really gone to town on making as as network as good as it can but you don't need anything like that just to start it the majority of routers that you get now with the, you know your BT home hubs and all that stuff they've all got DHCPs on if well all of them should have it on anyway so you don't need a DHCP server you don't need a DNS server you don't need a dedicated server of any kind really it's literally just Plug, uh, plug all your computers into your your router. If you haven't got enough ports on there, just go down to Maplin's or PC World. Even you know you can pick up a five port or even a ten port, ten to one hundred meg hub. You don't need a gigabit. You just need a ten to one hundred. That'll do you absolutely fine. As long as it's a, like, as long as it's a switch, though, I think over. Yeah, a hub. you need you need a switch over a hub. because um, I think hubs only go up to five port anyway. So um, as soon as you go over that, it's switch. So you're looking at about 20 quid if that and you, yeah. you just plug it in there you go you can all couple of tables somebody's living room couple of drinks 
we'll have to a make sure night. two two things you need to obviously make sure of. One, has your house got enough power? Uh, is the ringman yes. yeah. um, got enough ampage or impedance or whatever it comes out? I can't even my, remember how it works. Little... It's not impedance, is it? No. It doesn't matter too much nowadays because we're all using LCD. As long as nobody comes and it's like, oh, look at my PC with five <laughs> GTX Titans in it and it's like... CRTs <laughs> yeah, so, so long as... And that 22-inch you know, Yama CRT. <laughs> no, nobody's running CRTs anymore. Um, so they, it's not too much b problem on the power. So, like, so long as you're not running, like, like I said, four or five t uh, 2,000 watt... PSUs in your, your rig, you're really not going to be pulling that much, so just... It's just something to bear in mind. should be fine. Some yeah. guy came to a, a, to a BLR and brought a kettle and melted one of the cables. Oh, the yeah, power the cables. dickhead plugged it in. Like, Daisy <laughs> chained about four extensions together and boiled a kettle on it. <laughs> like, did anyone smell burning? <laughs> he, had he, had, he had a fridge, one of the piezoelectric fridges and a kettle. Like... <laughs> <laughs> oh well, it, it works at all. <laughs> See, yeah, it like a million people plugged into the same socket at all, is there? But if you, if you're worried about um, your power, what you can do a little trick that I found is um, and to, taught to me by an, an electrician friend is that you can run a power cable from the kitchen from the um, the special socket next to your cooker, which is on a separate ring main. Mm, yeah, that'll give you that'll give you the extra power you need. Yeah, and, oh, one and from the upstairs I'm circuit. Just going to say, yeah. quite often upstairs is on a different ring main, but you can check with an electrician if you're really worried about it. Um, on top of that, the other th uh, other things to think about when you're running a LAN is, um, you know, obviously hiring tables and getting. Make sure you've got the right surfaces because if you have people playing games on your kitchen table and you're in front of your, you know, on your on your sofa or something, they they're not going to be able to play very well. So make sure you've got tables and. Uh, Chairs, etc. And Bring depending them. on the time of year, don't underestimate the amount of heat that a PC oh, will God, take out. Oh God, yeah. Especially yeah. a collection of PCs. Yeah. yeah, we've done it in the summer, and we had to have an air conditioning unit on full time. And then we still had overheating. Thirty PCs. degrees, thirty degrees got in the front room at one point. I think that was the one you came to actually, Donald. I think that oh, was a hot God, one. Oh God, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. Had a few hot ones. There's, there's um, it's. I mean, another thing as well is is noise. Like, uh, take it consideration because people get get rowdy and get loud when you're playing games and if if you're in somebody's house and you're in a you know a, a suburb or something like that you you'd, after 11 o'clock if you're loud there's probably going to be somebody complaining and it's just last thing you want is you know police knocking at your door so it's obviously it's just something just to be considerate about you know when when you're screaming down i'm gonna kill you <laughs> your next door neighbor's just thinking what the hell's going on there mm, yeah um Apart from that, yeah, power daisy, daisy chain, and just going on back to that um, with your power cables, power reels. Just make sure that they are fully unwound. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because we've had even even if it's just you know just wound in a circle, um, just as long as it's out of that initial wind around the drum, you it's because as soon as you start putting power in that, it's obviously going to heat up, and then you'll smell burning eventually. So. Yeah. Yeah, or your milk cables as we did at Lands. Yeah. Always, always take your own network cable as well. It's another good yep. uh, good hint just in case. I, mean, I know with Lands like yours, you generally supply the cables. Um, yeah. In yeah. fact, some Lands specifically say don't bring a network cable because we have them all wired to the desk you'll waiting find for it, you. You'll, yeah, you'll, if, yeah. You, if you go into an organised Land, they'll, they'll tend to have cables and they'll basically have a cable uh, taped to the back of your yeah, we, yeah. desk. Yeah, we have a cable plug it taped to the back of each desk just easy really and yeah. lands lands are a pretty easy experience i think in general it's very relaxed the people who run them are generally as long as you're respectful they're quite you know they're quite accommodating if you're not very respectful you'll probably get kicked out and then your pc will get booted out after you you know just <laughs> yeah throwing at your head because if you're not respectful in life you know you're going to get shit like that happen and then you're going to blame everyone else for it because you're that kind of person yeah. so die and treat like, your mother right. Yes. <laughs> as long as you don't come up to the LAN, download the internet. Um, oh, that was, that, that was the thing that actually made me go into the rant about be prepared for things. If you're at someone's house, and in fact it might even happen in a commercial premises, be aware that if you're downloading stuff, you will get capped at some point. If everyone's downloading updates to games or downloading gigs and gigs of stuff, it's going to get you, your ISP will cap you. Uh, Virgin yeah. do it after a certain amount during Not the anymore. day, don't they? So they're not? not anymore. Not anymore. Not downstream, just upstream. Oh, okay. You can download as much as you want on Virgin now. So good job we didn't stream then, isn't it? 
because that takes up a lot of upstream. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. We, we we've actually got a, a, a quick pimp for us before we uh, before we let Thorno do his pimping. Um, <laughs> Uh, we are. We recorded last week's weekend's LAN. Uh, we recorded all the screens. Uh, we were going to stream it, but we decided to record it and edit to edit it together. So at some point in the future, I don't know how long it will be before before I do it because I've, I'm addicted to to area at the moment and that's taking all my time up. Um, but when I do do it, I'll get that on YouTube and you can all see what a LAN actually looks like. A little LAN, anyway. Uh. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yes. Do you want to uh, give us a last pimp for your LAN, um, Thorno, and then we'll uh, then we'll get off? Yeah, uh, we lanops.co.uk. Uh, I'll put it in chat now, actually. Uh, oh, I've got a log in bollocks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll put it in. Somebody put that in for me. I'll put uh, lanops.co.uk. Um, yeah, that's the one. Uh, we run LANs in Sheffield. I think we're in about four a year now. Um, next one, can't remember the date. Uh, it's the weekend. 17th of November, is it? No, it's the 14th to 16th of November. Right. So it's the weekend that World of Warcraft comes out. Um, that's the only reason I know it. The only way I know it is. Uh, running, it's £25 for place. You come, we open up 4 o'clock on the Friday, close 6 o'clock um, on the Sunday. And we'll just be running games like, i uh, just got the. Tom schedule up here. Uh, TF2 prop hunt, bit quick live, Unreal Tournament, Supreme Commander, Which you Minecraft take? Hunter games, uh, Unreal Tournament 3 we're running. <laughs> I'm not... We are proper old school old men, aren't we? We, we really don't like any of the Listen, modern what games. What's wrong with UT99? <laughs> yeah. I, I, for, I prefer UT99. It's just more people have got 3 and prefer 3 because it looks nicer. Um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I hate the double jump stuff, and it's just like the fact that that's not in uh, UT ninety nine. What the, you need the, is the a cloud step. in a bottle. Yeah, the dodging. Yeah, I love dodging. Some people turn it off; they can't deal with it. I, I anyway. don't like it. I don't like it either. It's I like, do. It's like I'm cheating. Uh, yeah, plenty of games being played. Um, lots of social games. Uh, lots of console games. We got Bright's Lounge, which you'll be running throughout weekends. Running. Whatever we can find to put on. I mean, we had lots of scrappy challenge and Pokemon on last time. That's all we we just had that running through the entire land. Um, and for any WoW players that want to come and join more WoW players, there's going to be a dedicated line for you. So, um, we've got four internet lines, uh, so we're going to give the WoW players a couple just to make sure that they've got the speed and they've got the download they need. So yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a good laugh. Good stuff. Well, um, so unless you two have anything to pimp, I don't believe so this week. I shall, um, I shall run us out. So thanks everyone for uh, watching. We've had a good, uh, good crowd again today. And uh, next week we'll be back at six. Th I think next week actually. Let me just check because it, I may be lying there. I think I might have something on next Wednesday. It wouldn't be six thirty anyway. Uh, Seven thirty. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's my wife confusing me. It's next uh, next Friday. Um, so yes, we're going to be back next uh, next Wednesday at seven thirty. We don't know what the subject is yet, but it's not going to be Minesweeper for uh, for Woods Potato Power, who is obsessed <laughs> with that game. Every single week, he talks about it. Um, and yes, um, we'll, we'll we we're in the middle of doing a Metal Gear Solid uh, two run through at the moment. We should be. We didn't do anything. We, we put something live this Monday. Next Monday we'll be get put in another pre-recording live. Um, and we should have got a bit further through it. We are not doing any multiplayer games at the moment. Although we may at some point do some Terraria streaming. Because we're all playing it at the moment. Apart from Sam. See how happy he is when he says that. I am. I, it, I can't believe how much I've got into it though. I really can't understand why my brain has... has Said no to Minecraft and said no to all of the other building games. Like I hate Little Big Planet and that kind. Of, you know all the. They just. I don't know what it is about them. I just thought it's pointless. It's not got an end game. But there's something about Terraria that really, really gripped me. Play it. <laughs> Bitches. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> Do it now. Do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Get out. <laughs>
Um, so yes, uh, Friday, we probably aren't going to be streaming anything. I've got a lot to do at the moment. I've got a lot of video editing and other things and, uh, and that. So yes, thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you later. See you later. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye.